Farodi TV wega umagana moshie Naleta sadaka za sifa kwako Bwana Heshima na mamlaka sipoke Mtakatifu mtakatifu umechia
For we have come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God, where he delights in the praises of, this, of his people. Child of God, we are not here before men. We are here to, to the audience of one. We are here to render praises to the one who was and is to come. The one who doesn't have an end. The one who doesn't have an, a beginning. His voice alone can shut the mountains. His voice alone can part the seas. Master, take a bossa. You are exalted, Jesus. You are exalted, Jesus. You are exalted, Jesus. I see the Lord seated on his throne, highly exalted, holy. I see the Lord, he is seated on his throne, highly exalted holy the Lord gave me this song as I was preparing and he took me to Isaiah chapter 6 and this will be your testimony that once every blockage is removed once sickness is removed you say I see the Lord he is seated on his throne and he is highly exalted
Tomorrow, my God, sound the alarm of 
here. He's here. He's here. He's here. The last song we're going to do is a declaration. It's called the warrior sound. It's called the warrior sound. Ah, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. The Lord is doing something new. The Lord is doing something beautiful. And we are here to behold it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want you to follow my lead. And I want you to do like this. Come on, I want to see warriors of Kenya. Let's go. Let's go. Twenty. Come on, dance for Jesus. Let's go.
this make some noise now what i need you to do i need you to make some noise like the lion of judah is in this place rama feast 2024 make some noise can the inner lion in you roar rama feast roar This is what we are going to do. When I ask you a question, example giving, who's the king of kings? You say, Jesus. Who is the Lord of lords? So now that was practice run. Who's the king of kings? Who's the Lord of lords? Who's the lion of the tribe of Judah? Now can we say Jesus seven times? Jesus. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, now scream like you know you have Jesus in you. Welcome to Rema Feast 2024. Silence is golden, speech is silver. I am the golden voice, God's son, Cheaton Glovo. And it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. Are you excited to be at Rema Feast 2024? Are you excited to be at Rema Feast 2024? I am definitely looking forward to what this day has got for us. It is the final day. You know that final lap? This is the day when that thing that you've been praying for is going to come. There's somebody seated right here, right now. You know you are going to get that text message. Nasir Mpesa. You know that message that you've been waiting for. Are you ready for that text message? There's someone seated in here today, you are going to get that email. You know the email you've been looking forward to? This is the day that email comes. There's somebody here today, you've been waiting for that phone call. You know that call? The one that's going to tell you, Monday, it is coming today. There's somebody here, you've been believing God for healing. You've been saying, God, yani. Today is that day. If you know you are the person believing for healing, I, uh, uh, maybe you are not believing for healing. Maybe you need to talk to another neighbor. The one you are talking to, are you believing for healing? Today is that day. I'm an Amnagani. If you are here and you've been believing God for that breakthrough, today is that day. So remember what Apostle Selman had told us yesterday. I hope you've written down your prayer requests. I hope you've written down those prayer requests. If you haven't and you're just hearing this for the first time, just take a notebook or a, note, uh, or a paper and just write down your prayer requests because today is that day when your miracle is going to um, I would also like to just uh, recognize some of our supporters who are here today and our partners. Particularly, allow me just to bring some attention onto Unilever. Man, Unilever are doing something beautiful for us here at Drum Office 2024. You can get a chance. They are providing a dental clinic right here on site. So just go to the back of the tent and you'll be able, uh, back of whichever tent you are at, just to go to their spot. Also, we would like to send a massive shout out to Coca-Cola for the refreshments. KCB for partnering with us as well. I'm sure you have seen the mass. I'm sure nobody has had Shidea internet. Kunamutu wamekona Shidea internet. So that has been brought to you, of course, by Safaricom. And of course, we want to thank all these partners for coming to us uh, here today and just for being a part of what Rema Fista 2024 is all about. If you are joining us online, I just need you to write up a comment section. Just make sure you tell us where it is that you are watching us from. And you can also share this. Share this on your Instagram, on your Facebook, on your Twitter. And if you don't know where we are on all our social medias, it is Rema Fist KE. That is Rema Feast, Feast as in Kukula, since we're here to eat the word. So Rema Feast KE on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, on Twitter, and share this so that somebody can be blessed. Because if you do, in case you are not yet sure, there's someone on your friend list who's waiting for you to share this, and you could change their lives absolutely. Aman Amnagani, are we excited for what Friday has got? Now this is what I want you to do. Stand up on your feet, please. I want you to turn to your left neighbor. Uliza, say my neighbor, neighbor. I, uh, you're talking to a neighbor who's not as strong voiced as you. Turn to the other one. Tell them, neighbor, neighbor. Ama, maybe you need to find the neighbor behind you. Turn behind you and say, neighbor, neighbor. Ask them, neighbor, what happened? 
You must have been a beautiful baby. Let us welcome Joyce Omondi. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. What an honor and a privilege it is to be here at Rema Feast 2024. Indeed, we have seen the Lord's hand and we are so grateful. Please have your seats for just a moment. But <laughs> um, we want to bless God for this incredible week that we have had here at Rema. As you've heard, my name is Joyce Omondi Waihiga. And I'm so, thank you, thank you. I'm so honored to be serving here this week. Um, one of the things that I personally love about Rema Feast is how intergenerational Rema Feast is. We have people of all ages, from all different churches that join us. And you know, we've been hearing about Kamoto Fulani Hapo. Can I just give a special shout out to all the young people in the house? Mkoapi! Whoa! You guys have come in hot and heavy. And you know, our next speaker is one who has been among us. He really identifies with us as well. <laughs> it seems there are some guesses already. <laughs> he is one like us. A young man on fire for the Lord. Amen. He's been a musician, a rapper. He's done all manner of things. And if you've been here tapping grace like we've been taught, I pray that this morning you're ready to do the same and to receive. And so would you kindly turn your attention to the screens? Pastor Team Wangi is a dynamic and inspiring pastor, mentor, and corporate speaker with over 15 years of experience in ministry and leadership development. He's the founder and senior pastor of Life Church International Limuru, Kenya, where he is known for his thought-provoking and practical teaching style. He is the founder and president of the Truth Mentorship Society, which reaches out to more than 100,000 students annually. In addition to his pastoral responsibilities, Pastor Tim Wangi is also a sought-after speaker and mentor for corporate and business leaders. He has a passion for helping professionals achieve success and fulfillment in both their professional and personal lives and has a unique ability to connect with audiences and deliver powerful messages that inspire and motivate. Whether speaking to a church congregation or a corporate audience, Pastor T's message is one of hope, purpose and transformation. He is a gifted communicator with a heart of empowering others to reach their full potential and live lives of significance and impact. With a Jesus ovation, let's make well. Ladies and gentlemen, Rema Feast 2024, please welcome Pastor T. Wangi. Hallelujah. 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 I, Jesus. Uh, I don't take it, I don't take it for granted to be here. I, I don't consider myself 
worthy to be on this pulpit, but it takes the grace of God to stand here. There are many that labor in the vineyard, many that have done more than what I have done, but by divine selection, the Lord just found it worthy for me to be here. Rema Feast. Rema Feast has been a personal blessing. The first time I came and it was my meeting because I remember I met Apostle Joshua Solomon behind the, the in the tent and yesterday is when I remembered he prayed and he said I release the grace of influence that was the first Rema feast I preached the second Rema feast prophet Ian Dilovu picked me by the word of knowledge and immediately when he uttered what he uttered the nations of the world just opened up And yesterday, I was sitting next to Bishop Mark, and the Holy Spirit told me, never confuse proximity for being in the same level. You can be in the same poster, but you are not of the same rank. And he told me, acknowledge the grace of this father, and let him pray for you. And I told the Bishop, it is not a coincidence that I'm sitting next to you. Let me tap from your grace. And I want to assure you, I'm so humbled this morning, I want to appreciate Rev. Julian Kula. I think I took time to understand him, but later I realized God has given him the heart of a father. He is patient to see men grow. He called me and told me, I'll give you an opportunity and how you use it matters. And that's how many... ...things happen. But she has managed to stretch her limits and to accommodate me with all the dynamics, raising our daughter and our son, Tiffany and Tyron, I really honor you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your covering. I want to acknowledge all the men of God that are here, all the pastors from Ruak Assembly. I believe you can do a better job than me, but you, you, you just allowed me to be here. Thank you. I'm standing on your labors. I want to appreciate my brother, Pastor George, City Lighters. Bro, we love you. God bless you. Pastor Wambogo, thank you. And all the men of God that are here, may God bless you. Thank you for your prayers, all the generals that are here. Before we do anything, I just, allow me to say this, I'm not a prophet, but I hear God. There was a move of God that had begun in Kenya. Because moves of God are like tsunamis. It will take an earthquake in the ocean for there to be impact on the shore. The earthquake is silent, but the impact cannot be ignored. And there are two forces that cause a tsunami. Either an earthquake when two tectonic plates collide. Anytime there is a collusion between humanity and divinity, it is called encounter. And when there, is an, when there is a volcanic eruption, it means something was under pressure for so long, it was just waiting for an opening for there to be an eruption. And I remember immediately after the election, let's appreciate Bishop Mark. And I remember immediately after the elections, we began to see stadiums and tents full then there was an interruption of a political process and the atmosphere in kenya shifted and the thing died then another momentum began another momentum began 
And as it was about to hit a peak, another political process began. And immediately after the political process, I want you to listen to me with spiritual ears. And I know there was a genuine cause until there was a hijacking force. And after that political process, there was a lot of things, bloodshed, and a lot of things that happened in the nation. But in the month of June, I had the Lord and he told me, there is another momentum that I'm going to build. If you have realized the whole of August, every week there has been a meeting in Kenya. And it is not a meeting of a denomination, but a meeting of the body of Christ. Meaning that there is earthquake and eruptions. This time we want to declare the wave will not be intercepted. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's appreciate our father, Bishop J.B. Masinde. Amen. And I remember Bishop J.B. told me, it's your time and your turn. And I want us to lift a prayer in two minutes. Because what I sense in my spirit, if the momentum is sustained by January, every church will be on fire. Whatever we have been waiting for will be there. Because it takes a sustained momentum for us to enter into what men call revival. I have seen young people preach in the Matatu. I have seen young people sing at Kencom. Something is happening. Those small pockets of fire, this is that spoken of Prophet Joel. And I want us to lift up our voices and begin to contend and declare this time we will not be intercepted. This time we will not be intercepted. Somebody in the next two minutes begin to make a prayer. There will be no wave that is going to intercept the motions and the move of God in Kenya. There will be no political process again that is going to interfere with what God wants to do in our land. Somebody open up your mouth. This is for a generation. The father saw the glory of the previous temple. Our generation must see the glory of their day. The Bible says, oh God, repeat thy works again in our day. Repeat thy works again in our day. We refuse to be intercepted. We refuse to be intercepted. We refuse to be interfered with. We refuse to be cut off. Let the schedule of Zion be implemented in our day. Let the program of heaven be implemented in our day. Just hold on the music. Everybody lift up your hands. Let's make prayers of agreement. Father, for the sake of a generation, we were born in the season of Ichabod when the glory departed. Some of us have never interacted with your power and your presence. We hear of the 70s and the 80s. We were born in the 90s and in the 20s. But oh God, what preserved the previous generations was your move. We have observed with the eyes of the spirit and there is a demonic interruption and assignment to intercept what you are doing in our land. Today we gather as the body of Christ. We declare not again, not again, not again. We overthrow the tables of the enemy. We overthrow and overturn the tables of the enemy. We overturn the political process that has been used as an avenue to interfere with your program. Whatever was scheduled for Kenya in 2024, we declare we will not be behind schedule. Whatever was announced prophetically, whatever was declared over the territory of Kenya, we declare in the name of Jesus, it shall come to pass. Allow me to say this because we have to be sensitive. Every generation cannot survive without a move something must move in their day and there are three moves that are always competing for each other number one 
you can have the move of the devil where evil becomes the order of the day. I am tired of seeing mega clubs with ashes, Kaya, with the uniform, and there are no mega churches in a nation where 40 million are beyond 35. It is error. I say it is error. There is a generation that doesn't know Jesus. There is a generation that needs to hear the gospel. If, if, we, if we don't get the move of the devil, we might enter into what we call the moves of men. Because men can also move. There are territories where men speak and everything stagnates. But the last move is the move of God. And I want to believe, I want to believe this is not a coincidence. This is not a coincidence. God, agenda of a Kenya will be fulfilled. I was looking and I was asking the Lord, what is happening? I looked myself on the poster. I discovered Bishop JB, Bishop Mark, that I'm in the fourth generation. Because you sit in the generation of the fathers. After you, there is a generation where my father is, Apostle Juma. Then we have the generation of Bishop Kula. And then I'm there. And guess what? When curses were announced, they only lasted to the fourth generation. Meaning that whoever we are calling Gen Z, Kaya. I decided, I decided to ask the Lord, what is this breed? Gen Z, listen to me. That revolutionary spirit is not of hell. The problem is revolution against what? The Lord, the Lord never changed the aggressiveness of Paul. He just diverted it for the gospel. Ah. Kaya balo satire. We still need that radical spirit. But let it be now be directed for the gospel. When Peter stood, he said, this is that. I want to show you what I saw concerning Gen Z in the book of Joel, where Peter quoted chapter number 2 from verse 1 all the way to 11. We will read and you will see that generation. Joel 2 from verse 1. The Bible says, if all can read, let's read. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. Continue. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains, a people come, great and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them, even for many kapala tosia repelia zatala paraso ikratalamano successive. There is a new breed without greed. There is a new breed that is going to give us a new Kenya in less than a generation. We just need to divert. Their aggressiveness. So that next time, have a salimi, Bishop Mark. When a salimia, systems of darkness. Uh, uh, oh, if you're not a Kenyan, don't worry. That's, that's our local language. Every territory has their grammar and their home issues. Hallelujah. Tell you, I'll give your neighbor a high five. Mambie tutanza kusalimiana the other way. Hallelujah. We refuse to greet our fathers. We refuse to greet them that labored in the gospel. And today we can preach because of their scars. We will honor the generals and tell them, listen, you killed Goliath. Let us kill the sons of the giant. You can't fight our battle. You won't understand what LGBTQ is all about. You won't understand us. You won't understand conversations on Twitter. You won't understand roasting. You won't understand TikTok. But we are peculiar. We are the army for this. Just ordain us and release us. The giants of our day are strange. But they are not impossible to slay. 
Let the fathers become the light. The ones that have the pattern of killing giants. Let them become the light. Let's, let's go quickly. I bless the one who gave me time. May God bless you. A fire divorced before them and behind them. A flame burns. The land is like the garden of Eden before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Look at four. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses. And like swift steeds so they run. There are different types of horses. There are horses trained for races. There are horses trained for battle. And there are wild horses which can never be trained. This is not a wild horse. This is a horse we will train for battle. And there are horses that are kept for beauty. We are not raising slay queens. No, no, no. We are not raising slay kings. Let, let me put it up well. We are raising giant slayers. Those are the slayers of our day. Ah, if it is slain, come with the head of Goliath. Come with the head of Goliath. Come with the head of Goliath. That is the generation we are raising. Somebody say, I'm one of them. Let's continue because we need to settle this matter. With a noise like chariots of a mount drops, they leap like the noise of a flaming fire. That divorce the stubble like a strong people set in battle array. Before them, the people right in pain, all faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. Look at them. They climb the wall like men of war. They have returning officers. Everyone marches in formation and they do not break the rank. This is where Bishop, we need to come. So that we train a generation about honor and rank. Because if there is no matching with the formation, it means that a disorganized generation. But when we begin to understand that there is rank and honor men that have rank, we will go far. We refuse to insult our fathers. No matter what we know, we refuse to insult them. Because you, the, the order is that you ought to be better than your father. So if you are better than your father, your father has not failed. The success of a leader is weighed by the success of the successor. So you can't look at a father and say, he doesn't know what I know. Listen, the reason why you know what you know and he doesn't know is because he's a good father. We refuse to look at the former generation and think they are ignorant and they don't know. It is out of their labors and shoulders that we are able to know what we know. We will honor them. We will minister to them. Because one day we will too be fathers. And whatever a man soweth, exactly that was he shall reap. Hallelujah. I read a scripture, he said, that have you not realized that Noah was so comfortable with the sons that he even drank in their presence. Sometimes fathers become vulnerable to us. The man would have hidden and possibly wake up with a hangover, but he was so vulnerable to the sons. He revealed the human vessel, the clay vessel. But only one son knew what to do with the father. But remember when he woke up, it's not the man who was cast by God. It is the son who was cast. Let us not attract a curse. One battle we will never win, no matter who supports us, is the battle against fathers. That one we can't win. No matter who supports us, is against his father. I asked Bishop JB, what do you do when men fight you? He says, I come first in charisma and we negotiate. If they can't accept me in charisma, then the anointing will deal with them. He said, when the anointing deals with them, I can't withdraw it. It's too late. Every man is a carrier of a grace. Ha. Let me share this example, and it's a foolish one. A, a girl broke my heart. And my friend came and told me, No, 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 
or you appoint him a vicar home. Now let's go back to scripture. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone matches information and they do not break rank. Let's read it quickly. They do not push one another. Everyone matches in his own column. Though they lag between the weapons, they are not cut down. Let's read nine loudly. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter the windows like a thief. Let's look at nine. You remember how they entered parliament? They are quakes before them the heavens tremble the sun and the moon grow dark and the star diminish their brightness when you hear the sun and the moon it is not physical it is secular powers that's why Joseph saw the sun and the moon bow he saw the authorities of Egypt bowing so this means there is a generation that will uproot secular systems Powers that have dominated in territories because they are peculiar. Oh my God, they are peculiar. Let's finish, let's finish, let's finish. The Lord gives voice before his army for his camp is very great for strong is the one who executes his word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? I hear the sounds of victory. Let's declare that song in the atmosphere. Ratala I hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound, the sound of victory. I hear the sound of victory. We are here victory. for a generation. I hear the sound. You will of not victory. die. Thank you. We can have our seats. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Allow me to take the little time that I have this morning just to lay something. I want to build on a conversation, a statement that I had. It was announced by Dr. Mike Mudok, um, who is a father to Bishop James Thicker. He said that the world has rejected the person of Christ but has embraced 
the principles of Christ. But the church has embraced the person of Christ, but has rejected the principles of Christ. I'll repeat. The world has embraced the principles of Christ, but they have rejected the person of Christ. But the church, on the other hand, has embraced the person of Christ, but has rejected the principles of Christ. One of the things is that when we begin on this conversation, it's a very technical conversation. Because the first thing we need to understand, by the grace of God, I have managed to visit a few nations. I, I, I went to America, went to the UK, went to Dubai, and before I came, I was in South Africa. And I realized, if you come from the village like me, born in Narok, where you grew here, you need to pray to make it in life. And I'm not here to say prayer is bad. And then you land in Dubai. And you don't find prayer mountains and see the opulence of cities. You might backslide. When you land in a place like China. And see the systems of their technology. And see the advancement of what they are able to achieve. I tell you the truth, if you're not grounded, you will backslide. You land in America and see the world. You land in the UK and see the systems. You might end up backsliding. And one of the greatest lies, I've sat down with a few people. One of the greatest lies is that these nations are atheistic in nature. That's a lie. For there to be a system of progress, exploits, and abundance, there must be a pathway of priestlyhood that has partnered with the thrones. For there to be a system of exploits, abundance, and some level of innovation, there must be a priestlyhood that is connected to the throne. The pattern is as ancient as Babylon. The pattern is as ancient as Babylon. You remember the Bible says that the king Nebuchadnezzar had some wise men that surrounded the throne. Let's appreciate Bishop Kula. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's celebrate him. We are standing here because a man obeyed God. Thank you, sir. Amen. So anytime you see progress, there must be a priesthood that is connected to the throne, the pattern of Babylon. And that's where we draw a lot of patterns in terms of government formation, is that the throne was guarded by some wise men. So whatever men call secular, when you go to the root word of the word secular in Latin, it means secularum. Which means without God. But nature does not permit a vacuum. So the fact that they are not worshipping the God that we worship. There must be a spiritual pathway that men are pursuing. Are we together up to there? And I came to a conclusion that the world is not becoming secular. The world is becoming spiritual. The world is becoming more spiritual. But the paradox is, the church is a little bit becoming more secular. I saw a video of a Gen Z because it was public. He was asked in Kenya, so what's the coolest thing to do? He said, astro projection. A 19 year old who knows astro projection, 19. That is the system of having out-of-body encounters. Meaning that she, she is entering into a civilization where she can go out of her body and enter realms that are not familiar. I know we see things on our social medias. And, and we, are, we are raising a generation that is more 
conscious on spirituality than on materialism. That's why the current theology does not make sense because we are in a generation that is not, let, let me put it this way, we are in a generation that prefers access more than ownership. We are pastoring a generation that is in the age of post-materialism. Whatever their parents are calling miracles, they are getting it with one forex trade. So my father retires at 65 and he buys a new pro box and the whole village cannot rest. The testimony on Sunday with my mother is how the Lord has blessed them. And there is a second year who has three million that he made in three months. So when you tell him this car is a blessing, he cannot see God in that car. And so there is a generation that is looking God in the lenses of the previous generation and God is not making sense. And so a door has been opened and that's why the conversation has been we, we are all pursuing spirituality and the destination is one. But everyone is pursuing spirituality and that's true. But what I've discovered is that when we begin to study spirituality, the genesis and the foundation of sober understanding of spirituality is in the Bible. Are we still there? I'm heading somewhere. Now, majority of the people interested, there was a time in high school, people will say Charlie Charlie and someone and spirit. They were taught how to draw some demonic patterns and it was trending on TikTok. Because the enemy understands the time. But I don't know whether the church understands the time. Let us look at the scripture. In the book of Luke chapter number 12. 54 to 56. The Bible says. Then he also said to the multitude. Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, a shower is coming, and so it is. 55. And when you see the south wind blow, you say there will be hot weather, and there is. Then he asked, hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? I studied time and I discovered the revelation of the time you are living in will begin to dictate the actions of that time. In the book of 1 Chronicles 12, 32, the Bible says, And the sons of Issachar understood time and they advised Israel on what to do. So, Actions are dictated by time. So we may never understand the actions of a generation until we study the time of their existence. And time is so spiritual that if the church does not know time, there are men that carry intelligence of time. Esther chapter number 1 and 13. When Queen Vashti misbehaved, the Bible says the king went to men. Then the king said to the wise men, who understood the times? These wise men are priests of another order. But they had interacted with time to a point of giving predictions that were accurate. They said it is time to change the queen because Vashti has misbehaved. And yes, it was time for Esther to enter and interrupt the program of Haman. So some wise men had bonded with time and they decoded what was meant to happen. Now the Bible says before Moses was born, in that time, there was a demonic partnership with the throne of Pharaoh to make a decree that children born between this time and this time 
ought to die because in the heavens we discern a deliverer is coming. Before Jesus is born, Herod rises with the spirit of Pharaoh to release another decree of execution because according to time, the Savior was coming. But the church was not sensitive of time. Jesus missed them and told them, you are able to look at the clouds and discern the weather, but how come you have no sensitivity of the time? Jesus is entering into Jerusalem. He looks at them. He cries and says, if only you knew the time of thy visitation. Because God is eternal, but man lives in the frame of time. And so if man misses what God wanted to do in time, it is not God who loses, it is man who misses. I want to declare Kenya, we will not miss the time of our visitation. There will be sensitivity to look at a generation and say, wait a minute, why are they like this? The sons of Issachar understood time and they advised Israel on the actions to take. Are we together up to there? They understood time and they advised Israel on the actions to take. I, I watched many things and the other time I just came across something from the Simpsons. I don't believe they are prophets but they have made predictions that cannot be questioned. And guess what they pointed? They brought a clock and they were showing that the time was entering to the midnight hour and they acted a scene of rapture. When is the last time you had the message of the coming of Jesus? When humanity loses eternal destiny focus, they will abuse the grace of their existence. Now let me explain. Because there must be a balance before we build Shakahola. Because we can teach end times and create earthly useless men. But heaven relevant candidate. But we can also teach end time. We can, we can abandon end time and raise earthly useful men. But heaven useless men. Because you look at two men who lived in time. Both of them had the same opportunities. One of them is Solomon. When we look at the opulence of Solomon, he has everything everyone has. I read far and wide and I discovered when you join the Freemason, the, the, the ring they give you is called a Solomonic ring because the pattern of their study is Solomon. They can't understand how a man walked with such architect wisdom influence so they study that man he's a mystery and whatever they call the that that rank is connected to solomonic dimension men in the bible the bible says the same spirit that was in him is in me Kaya. so we are specimen rare that even freemasons can study but when Solomon is writing the last book, he's in a drunken state. And he writes in his old age, vanities of vanities. Because that's a man that never fulfilled all the assignments of his destiny in time. And Rev, thank you because you read this scripture and you messed me up. And this is what you said, you said in a meeting just passing by. I always tell Bishop JB, anytime I sit with the fathers, I get messages for Sunday. So you said in passing, you said in Solomon, there was a king and there was a priest. And he perfected kingship, but never perfected priestlyhood. So he was earthly relevant, but when he audited his life, he was heaven useless. Now some of us have perfected priestlyhood, but we have not perfected kingship. That is why a prophet dies. Everyone knows he's a prophet, but he has left his family in debt. Meaning that he perfected priestlyhood, but there was no balance between kingship and priestlyhood. Am I speaking to anyone? 
an intercessor that wakes up at four and wakes the whole plot up is now being threatened because of rent. So he, that intercessor has perfected priesthood, praying in Arabic tongues, Aramaic hey. And the posters of prayer in our generation, Bishop, I wish you can see them. Our generation yet to back on a pigagia kwa prayer. Zela baradosha daria kata yamando ibra. I tell we we have pioneered posters, but nothing is moving in the kingship. In boardrooms, we have no ideas because boardrooms don't hire intercessors. Oh my God. This is what I discovered. Let me say this by passing. There was no guarantee that Joseph would be a prime minister. The king needed the interpretation of the dream. But Joseph never gave the interpretation. He also gave the pattern of implementation. That is what gave him the job. Not the interpretation of the dream. And that's why our relevance to state house is useless. Because we give the king interpretation but not implementation. Ah. Mzaes kuza kwenda state house kupigwa selfies imeisha. Ni unatokea na proposal vile wa say 4 million watapata job. When intercessor you have downloaded it in the archives of the spirit and you tell the king I can interpret your dream and implement your dream. That's why many are spiritual but they are still in jail. Helping the man to go back to his work. And we call them prophetess. And oh, sorry, sorry. You know, maybe no hapa mleza nsalimia bada hapa. Anyway, let's continue. But, 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 but we have to have local conversations. Is that okay? Is that okay? And, and so when I saw that thing on the Simpson, so this is Solomon. He has perfected kingship and abandoned priestlyhood. So he begins by writing and saying, listen to the priest, the king of Israel. And then he says, vanities of all vanities so it is error when we don't have balance one of the problems with john the baptist and i, I thank god for remaphis because of the balance of teaching one of the things i thought being like john the baptist was radical until i studied john the baptist luke 181 the bible says he grew in spirit and that was it when you compare Luke 181 and Luke 252, you discover Jesus grew in stature, in favor, in spirit. There were other dimensions in Christ that John never grew. Now you understand why John, on Sunday his message was, brood of vipers, nyoka nyinye. And when I was growing up, and oh, we, oh, there are days of preaching in foolishness. When I was growing up, I thought confrontation was being radical. Until I realized I'm lifting one weight. I need to lift the weight of favor. Because if there is no balance, the audience will live more offended than not healed. And we are raising a generation that is growing in the spirit, but not growing in favor. And that's why when they go on Facebook, the first word is insult. And then they put it there. I don't care whether you like me or you hate me. And the devil likes it. One day the Lord told me, fight the brand where people want to call you a hater. Why? Because you might carry a genuine voice, but there is a brand that hinders consumption. Is someone getting me? Let's appreciate Bishop K for my. Thank you, sir. Now, let's come to the text. So when I, when I saw that, I realized there was an imbalance in, 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 in the life of Solomon. But when you look at a man like Paul, he writes and says, in the end of his chapter, he writes and says, I have run the race. I have kept the faith. And now, I am ready to be poured as a living sacrifice. Ready for the crown that was set before me. I discovered there was an old song that used to say, Niki Maliza Kazi Nita Visho Taji. Because the generation of Akina Bishop JB, they never served God for blessings, they served God for crowns. 
That is why nothing can shake them up. Not economy, no disease. I met an old woman. The husband could not get out of bed. And she told me, yes, I looked at that. I said, if that was me, I would be on Facebook saying, where is God? And the man was in that bed for almost 10 years, taking care of that man. And she saw God with the lenses of eternity. There are people who at the end of the chapter of their book, they will write like Paul. But there are men who might sit and I pray they are not here. They will sit where Solomon sat. So the vanity of wisdom. So the vanity of wealth. Because anything that is done without eternity in mind is vanity. Any achievement without eternity in mind. That's a man-made idol. The day we lose the vibration of eternity. Success will take us out of the presence of God. Hallelujah. I can tell you the truth, majority of the cars that are packed out of those big clubs, those were intercessors, those were worshippers. They came for cashers. But because they never had eternity in mind, a small job, a small car, a small breakthrough, diverted them. And I'm sorry to say our theology is also filled with raising appetites of material things. Listen. Ah. <sighs> The pattern of possession is very different from what we teach. I have studied the lives of many fathers and what they have, they never prayed for. They just walked with God and fulfilled Matthew 6. These things will follow thee. So I looked at that scripture, I looked at the Simpson and I asked, could they be knowing something that we don't know? Could they be passing an intelligence? I looked at the opening of the Olympics. I began to see the mockery of the church. I asked, why are they enacting the Last Supper? What happened in the Last Supper? It was a table of transition. And of course, the, of course, one of the themes there was, we are transitioning whereby the spirit of error will become idolized like religion. That's where we are going. In the UK, we were with Bishop, and I wanted to know the history of the church. And I entered the church, it was written open for all. And they're saying right now they want to revise theology to accommodate the plurality of God. He's a he, she. Now, these tools were used in ancient days when there was black uh, slave trade. The we wise men decided to twist the scripture and put black people as men that were ordained to be slaves. And the Bible was used for slave trade. We can't run away from what we call the dark history of the church. And so if a generation does not rise in doctrine, because miracles and prophecies are congregational, but doctrine is generational. You can't transfer healing, but you can transfer teachings. If you get healed today, it's only you. But if you get notes today, you can teach another person. And that truth will be transferred in generation. Am I speaking to anyone? And so quickly I decided to ask myself, what are some of the things that we see in the day? Jesus looked at that generation, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, and as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be before the second coming of the Son of Man. One of the things is that he gave an intelligence. When you look at the book of Luke 7, 26 to 30, he gives the days. Allow me to just raise eternal consciousness. He gives the days and he says, there are two days that every believer must study. The days of Noah and the days of Lot. And when you begin to see the habits of the day, maturing to some certain level, no, there is a problem. We do a lot of high school missions. Parents, let me tell you, that's what we do. Every, every weekend, we always reach to more than 10,000 students. I'm saying this on this land. Majority of our girls' schools, sometimes you enter school, 50% are lesbians. We are burying our heads, but the spirit of the age is attacking a generation. We don't want to talk it on the pulpit because those are our daughters. And then I looked at it as we began. I was invited in a boys' school. I discovered that gazing is the order of the day. I said, Lord, 
We want to bury our hearts and not have conversation. Then I began to interrogate and I asked, why is it that now we see this expansive advancement? And the Lord told me, consult the pattern of the days. It is captured in scripture that before the advent coming, these things will begin to happen. It is beyond moral proclivity. It is an atmospheric environment to create an atmosphere for his manifestation. Hallelujah. Oh my God. I'm sorry I'm not giving cars. I'm giving eternal life. So I studied the days. I discovered the days of Noah. There are a few things that are very similar with the two days. The days of Lot and the days of Noah were days of graces. Men erred and judgment never came. Noah preached for more than a hundred years. The gospel of grace. Only eight people repented. As it is today, people are mocking us and saying, we keep on talking about the coming of Jesus. When will he come? There is so much grace that even atheists are insulting God on TV. And saying, if he's there, let him kill me. These, they were there in the scripture as it was in those days. There, there were days of grace. These were days that lasted for long. They will be long days. It will not be a short time. That's why the parable of the virgin says, the wise and the foolish got tired. The wise virgin represented the church. Even the church will get tired of waiting him. And what happens when men are tired? They sleep. That's why the two virgins slept. Slumber, no prayer, no cashers. Nothing is moving spiritually. We gather for liturgy. We don't gather for fellowship. 45 minutes of exciting our spiritual consciousness. A hymn there, a song there. 15 minutes of preaching. We say hi to each other and go. Second service. But on the other side, the world is training. You find witches at the age of 12. Who are controlling a school. That when a daughter enters that school, if they are not well prayed up, you will take an innocent girl and bring and get and go back for a pervert. Am I speaking to anyone? He said as it was in those days. Then I decided to study the days of, of Noah. And what I discovered also, in both of the days, as it is the common eschatology, there were no wars. Right now there is no war in the world. It's only Israel here and possibly Ukraine there. But majority of the global states are peaceful. Is that true? Is that true? The Bible says men will be eating and drinking. You don't eat in the season of war. Another one will be farming. Another one will be sleeping. So there were no wars. There was so much peace. And so much sleep. But there are few things the days of Noah points us into. Number one, the days of Noah point us into something. The first thing, in the days of Noah, there was rebelliousness against God. The level of rebelliousness I'm seeing in a generation, it just fits what prophecy declares. I have seen hatred towards God, but not the way I am seeing now. There is such hatred that in some countries you just say you are a Christian. You are branded as a hater. Not even preaching. Just say you are a pastor. People see you as a hater. The Bible says they were the days of rebelliousness. Look at our day. Someone said there is a generation that parents cannot talk to. It is them talking to their parents. A generation insulting the elders. A generation looking at everything. And this is not about morals. It's about understanding the days we are living in. Then we'll begin to understand the activities that are there. Do I have parents in the house? Am I saying the truth? Some of you don't even talk to your children. You don't know what to say to them. They have an opinion about everything. And you are always wrong. Some parents are perpetually in tears. They don't know who they are raising. Rebelliousness. Number two, it was an age of technological advancement. 
You can't build a system like the ark without engineering, architectural, all those dynamics in play. I, I, I get excited with technology and I discovered by 2030 phones will be useless. We are now entering into the age where all you need are some special spectacles that you get SMSs, you get phone calls, the, whatever they are calling virtual reality. You can choose a worship song from Ruach and hear the preaching from Deliverance. You create your own church. Technological advancement. It is there. These things are on trial. We are in the height of artificial intelligence. We have lost our intelligence. You can't even give anyone direction. You send them a pin. That artificial intelligence will replace your intelligence and guide you. Oh, Jesus. Technological advancement. I think there has been few what they call, you know, moves of civilization. We began with the mechanical, came to the electrical, came to the civilization of the computer. From the age of the computer, in those almost 30 years, what has happened on earth in those 30 years has never happened in many thousand years. The whole technological, the kind of things we are having, and they are not evil. One of the things is right, right now, I have some of my sons who do mega meetings on Zoom. So the gospel is being preached radically and globally. So the barriers have been taken. There is an advantage and disadvantage. I don't want to dwell on the age of media because right now TikTok is doing a lot of recruitment. There are pastors and priests there from 12 midnight to 3 is a gate of doctrination. When literally, as the Bible says, when men were sleeping, the devil was planting. That scripture is in our day. As we are sleeping, our generation is being doctrinated. Huh. Jesus. Can I say something else? The days of Noah. The days of Noah. It was the age of genetic modification. GMO. There was collusion between celestial and terrestrial beings. A collusion between angelic and humans. L let, me, let, me, let me say this. The world is not doing titration. We need to revise our curriculum. The world is not doing titration. The investments of innovations is on modification of genes. There is a movie that came out and it was showing a child that has wings. And it's just trying to tell you the kind of thinking they are trying to adopt. And even if you go to YouTube, you'll see people creating mice that have human ears. Because they are saying in future, we need to breed a sheep that has human kidney for kidney harvesting. You breed a cow that has a human heart so that when you have a cardio problem, you just know where to get the heart. Okay. Watu wangu, tuko pamoja. Nasikia saa kuongea shea njumu kinya mazaibo mlanistua. Na jaribu tu kusema, yani devu wamefanya church tufikiri yange uku chini, atujui ni ina hapen kwa dunia. By the time Reva na kuja na kitu kama commonwealth, tunasema si tunataka fire, si tunataka fire. Umse, atupatie time tu, tulipuke hapa. Tunalipuka na dunia ina under system. COVID inatokea. Tunaomba watu wapate vaccine. Does it mean we don't have Kenyans with brains that can kaya, get, get an anointing, get in a lab, look at this thing and give a solution to the world? Ati tumekutana kesha tunaombea vaccine. Am I speaking to anyone? 
Because we must be mad of the status quo. Whatever is happening in the world, we can't challenge it with the current status mind. There must be a revolutionary thinking. And that's why now you begin to see the elites of the globe have taken care of your ear. Every young man is on earphones. And now they are going to take care of your eyes. They will give you virtual reality. To interfere with Proverbs 2012. Both the seeing eye and the hearing ear the Lord has given. So we will raise a deaf and blind generation. Because these are gates in the spirit. That's why now we must be sensitive what we are hearing. And I believe there is a reason why we gathered here. So we are looking at an age of genetic modification. The curriculums of the world. I met a 12 year old in America. Who was creating a, a technological system of security. AI. How to, to, to protect the house through, with robots. Then one day my daughter comes home. And she's told to take a photo like her grandmother, CBC. I said, the world, the world at 12, people are doing AI. At 12, you are making traditional soy size of grass and learning folk songs. And then you come and say, I have my passport. I want to go to the nations. Which nations? Then you go to the nation and say, I need favor to be accepted. Everyone is rejecting me. Listen, while we were sleeping, they were training. That's why there must be a conversation in church. I went to Dubai and looked at them. I said, I never had any Kesha. Yeah. Yeah, then they took me to the museum of the future. They are thinking 2071. As we are thinking 2027, reject. Oh. A, a man, a man has a blueprint for 2071. And what is the agenda? How they are going to get energy from the moon. Rev, men are done with us. Earth. Earth. Ask Elon Musk and Virgin Atlantic. They are now creating shuttles to space. What wa me malizana na dunia? Hitu na possess. What wa li malizana na yo? What wa me anza kuangalia moon na mass? Where we at a plot kamulu hauna? Oh Jesus. How, uh, for how long? For how long will we stay and just be comfortable? Hallelujah. Nana Bishop Agisemapa, you need to be blessed and it's a prosperity preacher. Alafu, poverty, poverty, poverty. Imetukalia. There is no glory in poverty. He that has the grain can make you sell your birthright. There is, we, I think we need, to, we need to say amen and begin to act. The church of Jesus, what is lacking is not prayer. My goodness, we have prayed. What is lacking is men that can enter in those spaces and begin to affect the globe. When we were in the UK with Bishop, I discovered for you to serve the king, they have to take you to a school called the School of the Elites. So they have the night schools where they take the School of the Elites. That pattern was brought in Kenya because we were colonized by the British. That's why we have national schools where they get all the number ones and gather them in one school, Alliance. I, I can't mention my school because we were others. And now, the intention there is to begin to raise men that are thinking different to interact with the throne. Because you can't serve the throne when you're mediocre. And then the Lord told me, do you know what the church ought to be? The name of the church is Ecclesia. That's the original word. That's the original word. It is called the called out ones. And this is selected men. Called out. So that in their gathering, they can dictate the affairs of the community. So when God looks at the church, he's not looking at people breaking altars. He's looking at a parliamentary kind of setting that can make legislation on a territory. Make rulings on a territory. He's not looking at poor men praying him to be rich. He's looking at co-rulers, co-heirs, co 
authoritarian people that understand what they carry but the modern day church we can't even fire a witch and the gospel is of necessity bishop sit down let me stick to my notes when you stand you'll confuse me i'll, I'll feel powerful <laughs> Oh my God, somebody say genetic modification. And then, and then, the other thing that happens in the days of Noah was apostasy and all those things. But when we come to the days of Lot, we realize, we realize that in the days of Lot, it was characterized by sexual perversion. There was a whole gay city called Sodom. It was a gay city where men never cared about women. To a point that Lot had virgins. And it is not because they wanted to. It's because there were no men to vibe them. Because those virgins later slept with their father. So, so when you study them, you discover, oh, they were virgins downstairs, but they carried the mindset of Sodom. And that is what is happening in our high school, Bishop Kefa. The enemy is not afraid that we have from one to from four virgins. He's afraid that they have not watched pornography. They are not bound in secular music. You know, he is, oh. He's not afraid that they have not done it. He's afraid that they don't know. That's why they doctrinate in high school. They implement in campus. Some of those towns and hostels. Hey, Jesus. It's not a hostel. People are married. Some are polygamous. Wazaini <laughs> kampo pia. Kuna jamali lalanga na wochi a whole term. Jua kupigwa exile. Jurume tamemari. Na labda kirudimta ni asha church. Jua haizi implement ya home. Akingi ya kampo ana implement. Akirudi home and a conform the intercessor. That's why we don't see the moves of God in our generation. So there is a lot of perversion. Is it a fact? Perversion is the order of the day. We don't say it, but you listen to the radios. From six to six, we never talk economics. We never talk advancement of the nation. Six to six. Nation builders are speaking about marital affairs. 75%. 75% on traffic is pornography. Of IT. It's pornography. Maybe we may not want to say these things. But if revival has to come, the winnowing wind must pass and take away all the shaft. So that now the real power of God can come. And that takes me to the scripture of the day and I have a few minutes. Because what I discovered is that the world is becoming more spiritual. There are five things that govern the realm of the spirit. Number one, that realm is governed by words. What we say. Number two, it's governed by sound. That's why we have music. You study anywhere witchcraft drives, sound drives. In South Africa, I was taken to the market of witches. Given permit by the government to sell witchcraft. I found men hanging, slaughtered monkeys, vultures, snakes, lizards. And I got interested. I asked the man, um, if I want one that kills someone, he told me that one is special. We don't have it here. And then I asked him, every stall, he told every stall is not run by a businessman, is run by a spiritualist. And they have all manner of herbs in there. It's a whole center, more than 400 shops. And then the pastor who took me there told me, if this thing does not work, it could not be here. So it works. Number three, the realm is governed by altars. The strength of an altar is dictated by frequency of sacrifice. 
Number four, it is governed by sacrifices. The language of enthroning deities is in sacrifice. The only way you can confirm you are serving Baal is by sacrifice. That's why the Lord was not concerned where they lifted their hands is where they sacrificed. Because the endorsement of a deity is known by sacrifice. And if there are people who handle sacrifice casually, it's believers. Men are sleeping in graves to get power. Someone is walking with a living snake in the boot to get demonic power. It's a sacrifice. People are willing to pay the price of demonic ordination. But there is casualness. That's why we have casualties. How we handle our sacrifice and our worship is still one thing. And number five, and I want to focus on that, is consecration. The realm of the spirit is very legalistic. Whatever I'm sharing here, this is the same pattern that witches use. You'll never find a witch that cannot talk. They must speak words. Whatever we call spells come from the word spelling. These are words uttered on an altar. In our day, we don't utter spells. We release prayers. That realm answers to words. That realm answers to sound. This is where music comes in. Some of the cultures, the power of sound is so much that all they need to do is play some drums and they create a demonic atmosphere and spirits will move. And here we can raise a worship and the spirit of God will move. The spirit is sound sensitive. Nothing happened on earth until God said. A sound was released for there to be the motion of the spirit. When God said, the spirit moved. That's why the church must produce a sound. The day gospel music industry delayed, you can see how secular has taken over. We are no longer the one ruling the airwaves. But I'm believing God, we are coming back. With understanding, with revelation. Some of us, we might decide to go back. We were rappers before pastors. That thing is still there. Wajanja na jua swame lazo langata. Walio ito mafala ndio mapastas kwa alta. Kupata degree si evidence ya usmata. Wengi ndani ya maji wa meloa ka dasta. So chagua moja kwishi ya makufa. Chagua moja ikubali ukatae. Leo na cheka nao kesho talia solo. Na regrets moyoni machozi oh no. Heri heaven kuingia ni meparara. Kuliko hell kuingia tisuti ni mengara. Iki tubado iko. So we, can, we will go back for the sake of a generation. Because they can't grow. Wakianguka nae. Tutainuka now. Somebody say hallelujah. We are here for a generation. My goodness, let me read a scripture, then we can we can pray. I discovered that. I discovered that Isut is what Danganya in a bishop. Dwaone mini apostle na pastor. Lakini to kia mwa kurudi evangelism to tarudi na ubaya. Tutawarapia, tutawa prichia, na tutawa anoint. Jukina kaki meumana ni mbaya mbaya. Generation will not die without the gospel. Pastor George, kani kupiga masho tutapiga. Kani kupiga ma blocks tutapiga. But a generation must hear the gospel in our day. Hallelujah. Let me show you something then we'll pray. Just one minute. This is what is happening. Just sit down one minute because I said when Bishop stands, I feel powerful. Oh my God. Bishop, don't stand again. Listen, but, but thank you for encouraging us. You know, you, I'll, I'll go home and tell my wife, did you see Bishop standing? Iki to Iko. How you handled me from today on to change. Anyway, let's stick to scripture. Let's stick to scripture. You know, a part of you don't know I was a comedian also. 
vile chache lilikuja ndio sikutoboa but i did some comedy so sasa zingine waka nalipuka so mnisamee so so there is a path called the pathway of consecration somebody say consecration what 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 is lacking in the church is not absence of words not absence of sound not absence of altars and i don't even want to go there because there is a whole controversy on altars but the best thing you can do is to get the revelation of the altar of jesus that's the best thing you can do you have no capacity to raise an altar as a man but you can worship god with your sacrifice and and the, what is lacking is not the fall i tell you men are sowing seeds but the path of consecration which is where power lies that is where holiness comes in that is the problem and now jesus in the book of john chapter number 13 i want to read that scripture because i want to show you something that jesus did before commissioning the apostles and i believe when i was coming the lord was telling me this is a commissioning service. And I tell you, these things have happened in the day. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Now look at this. And supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him. The, body, the devil put it into him because of offense. Jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. What did he do? Rose from supper and laid aside his garment. Took a towel and guarded himself. Look at five. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciple feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was guarded look at six then he came to simeon peter and peter said to him lord you are not washing my feet you can't wash this is now he is now doing the final thing on them uh, jesus answered and said the, the, jesus answered and said to him what i am doing you do not understand now but you will know after this now look at eight peter said to him you shall never wash my feet you know there are people who can argue even with jesus jesus answered him if i do not wash you you have no part with me we are talking about you know one in christ unit in christ you have no part with me if i don't wash your feet you have no part with me and and then peter when he understood he said now peter said simeon peter said to him lord not my feet only i think i have a problem with my head begin with my head then go to my hands and then wash my feet now let me speak this naturally when a man takes a bath he doesn't begin with the feet he begins with the head goes to the shoulders and the hand finishes with the feet unless you have a bathroom that is two in one you know the two in one the ones in shags where the floor was rough so you will bathe as you are but what was shags what ashika yo what's what oh what were my showers you hot water you we are coming to you naturally you begin with your head go to the hands then go to the feet now the second thing if your feet are not washed you've not taken a bath no matter how clean your head is and your hands now what is this bad representing jesus did not have a problem with their head for three days rema feast has been washing your head it is called doctrines oh whatever pastor Ojo, whatever grace apostle grace whatever things have been downloaded i can tell you the head has no problem Kenya, we don't have a problem with the head. Every Sunday, we wash the head. Doctrines. How many notebooks do you have from the day you got born again? Head, head. Jesus didn't have a problem. For three years, he was washing their head. And when the head is clean, our conduct is delivered. Because the hands represent the conduct. Worship. Transactions. Trade. But there is a problem when we have a generation that has a clean head and clean hands but don't have clean feet. 
Because the language of possession is not clean head and clean hand. The language of possession is clean feet. Wherever the sole of thy feet shall step, then that shall be thy inheritance. What are the feet that possess? Why are we stepping and not possessing? Because for the washing of the feet is a picture of the walk. We talk the walk, but we never walk the talk. When you look at the scriptures, they are littered all over. In the book of Genesis, they had God walking. And man was meant to walk to a location and meet God. But God arrived at the location and asked, where are thou? Man had fallen from the walk. That is the redemption plan. To return man to the walk. The Bible says in Genesis 17, 1, Walk before me and be blameless. The product of Isaac was a product of a walk. Let's appreciate our father. Amen. It was the product of a walk. Somebody say walk. Joshua 1, 3. Where the sole of thy feet shall strap, that shall be thy possession. What is that? Walk. Luke 10, 19. And I give you authority to tremble upon serpents and scorpions. What is that? So, Matthew 10, 14. When you walk into a city, and they reject your walk. Shake the dust. And the city is cast. Because you are rejecting a man that walks with me. He has the ability to open a territory and to close it. Oh, what is lacking in church is not head knowledge. We know the Bible. I know on hand we are struggling because corruption is still on the increase. But the walk must be ordered. The Bible says the steps of a just man are ordered of God. Even Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Our Jesus is a walking God. You know, Bishop, I discovered children learn walking by observation. If my wife and I were crawling, none of our children would be walking. There's something that begins to tell them how I am behaving is not normal. And that's why the first time when a child walks, her walk is a walk of victory. They always walk like this. Because they have conquered something. It's called the hallelujah walk. Only those who have children can understand. Now, now they have discovered I am now behaving normally. Meaning that if we don't have men that can model walks in certain dimensions, a generation will be limited to pursue those dimensions. And that's why today I am believing God is a commissioning service. Because there must be real role models in this nation of Kenya. People that have walked a certain path. That I can look at Bishop JP and say I have seen his walk. I can look at Bishop Mark and say I have seen his walk. I I can look at Rev and say, I have seen how the man has walked in the marketplace and with God. And there are footprints that can be pursued. The Lord is calling the church not into an age of talk, but into an age of the walk. That is why when you begin to interact with the word of God, you discover that the greatest dimension of revelation is when God reveals his ways. Ha! Huh. That the word of God is so mysterious because when you deal with the word of God, you can enter the level of graphe, the written word. Graphics, it can help you. Then you can come to Logos. Logos, Ombogo. In Logos, you can deal with knowledge and you can deal with higher knowledge. It's called the Gnosis and the Pignosis. And that is where faith is produced. You can move from Logos and enter Rema. Where the word becomes alive in your life. You are not reciting it. You are becoming it. Because the word has the power to become. Then you can enter the realm of revelations. Revelations can puff your head up. They in Ezekufurisha Kichwa. And then after revelation, the line is drawn. Now you come to the realm of truths. Truths. For the realm of truths, you don't read. You obey. 
Because they give you principles. They give you disciplines. They give you laws. It is in giving that you receive. That truth cannot help you until you apply. And, and that's where the world has mastered. The world has taken our truths. Our principles. They are applying them and they have results. The church is teaching them but not applying them. That's why now you can find a whole debate of theologian is tithing biblical. Listen, the moment truths enter you, some debates end because one of the things you know, when you are in Christ, there is nothing you can give Christ. Oh, David gave an offering of one billion and repented. You, you are discussing tithe. The man gave a billion. He said, who am I, oh God, to give you? Yet all that I have is all yours. You, you are discussing 10%. He has given a billion. That's the, but you see, that dimension of truths, if revealed to babes, it can be abused. And then after truth, you come to mysteries. Mysteries cannot be handled by people that are not mature in revelation and truths. After mysteries, the work becomes personal. There the Lord can either give you secrets or give you ways. That one, it is the Lord that teaches a man. Every father seated here, if they preach, you will backslide. Bishop JB will tell you, without faith, you are going nowhere. Bishop Mark will tell you, without the word, you are useless. You can't even have faith without the word. Uh, Bishop Kefomai will tell you, without prayer. It, no matter what you know, if you don't pray, you die. Because for Bishop, the Lord taught him the way of faith. For Bishop Mark, he was taught the way of the word. For Bishop Kefomai, he was taught the way of prayer. That is the highest level of interaction when God begins to give you secrets. I was listening to some of the ministers speaking depths and I look at my Bible, I ask, am I reading old edition? Then I discover, I, I, did you feel the same? Then I look at it and I'm like, it has always been here. How comes, and I've even marked it in red, blue, and green. How comes I've never seen? Because a man is not in revelation. You, you have the appetite of revelation. A man is coming from the realm of saying, Lord, teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. Why? So that I may walk in them. Because I have discovered to Israel, you showed them their power. But to Moses, you showed him his ways. If there will be a generation of deliverers, we must begin to ask the Lord to deal with our walk. Their compromise must get out of the church. The days of holiness must come back. Not talking about it, but living it. The days of sexual immorality, addictions, they must come to an end. The Lord is seeking for a holy vessel. The move of God is the move of a holy God. You cannot have a holy God interacting with vessels that are defiled. I never came to preach to you. I came to preach to me. Because I too need to know the ways of Elohim. The Bible says you will hear a voice telling you go back to the ancient path. Go back to the crossroad and locate the path that was ordained for you. May that voice begin to thunder over your life. Kenya, we don't have a problem with the head. We don't have a problem with our hands. We have a problem with our legs. And that's why the first miracle that was performed by the apostles had everything to do with the leg. There was a cripple at the gate called beautiful. How can you have an ugly scenario in a beautiful gate? How can you have a cripple seated in a beautiful grave? That is the picture of the church. It is not a good picture. But the Lord is saying, Peter, unless I wash thy feet, you have no part in me. There is an allowance where you tell the Lord deal with my work Lord deal with my work I know my weakness I know the place of my failure it was David who prayed and said Lord teach me your ways that I may not falter that I may not put your name to shame we need to have that appetite where we can be genuine when David went to the Lord he never contended for the throne he said Lord let thy Holy Ghost not depart from me you can take the throne you can take the kingship. I saw a king without the Holy Spirit. I don't.
not want to be like Saul. Let the Holy Ghost not depart from me. You can deny me revelations, but teach me your ways. Teach me your ways, Lord. Teach me your ways. Teach Kenya your ways. We are tired of pursuing the way of death. We are tired of pursuing the way of ungodliness. Lord, teach me your ways. I came to preach for me because I need God. Whatever the fathers have done, we can't achieve by mysteries. Our generation is preaching in Greek and Hebrew, but no power. We have mastered the lexicon, but we have abandoned the way. There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but that is the way of destruction and death. But there is a path of ordination ordained over your life. And Rev, this is what I felt God wanted to do. My time is up and I'll just make two, two prayers. But these are the two people the Lord told me to pray for. Two of them. Two of them. Hold it. Two of them. I know many people, people, Bishop, who are so proud to tell you how they used to preach and God will move. But now they are running hardwares. People will meet you and tell you, Pastor, I used to sing. And the whole church will cry. But now they are leading karaoke. There are people who God has invested in them. Too much. Too much. There are two people. One. There are people God has invested in them so much. But they have refused to step out. They are comfortable being ordinary members. And part of that team. Some of them have ordinations from birth. Prophecies from birth. But they have refused to step out. The Lord was telling me, I don't have scarcity of workers. I have scarcity of men that have refused to come. I have invested in so many young people. Some of them, they come from lineages of mantles. But they have refused to get out. They have refused today. The Holy Ghost is going to locate you. Because he knows where you are. I don't know where you are. But he told me son. There are people I have invested in. Some even began to preach when they were in class 4. When they go and look at their albums. They were prophesying when they were young. But today they are so casual. They know there is something in them. But they have refused to arise. Today. The power of the living God. That power is going to locate you. They say power that made Peter to break the doors I can sense it upon my life that power is gonna locate you you will sense something has landed on me because the Lord is saying behold the harvest but the laborers are few but they are men I have invested in they are people they know what they carry it is some of them is not even seen it's just a lack of discernment church I want to tell you we don't have another generation to serve we don't have another generation to influence time is not on our side you will wake up and discover you are 60 and you can't go back to high school evangelism you will wake up and discover you are 70 and you can't give for the work of God you will wake up in a five bedroom discover you are 80 yet you are meant to be a prophet to the nation you will not be behind schedule may the law begin to pick you now people that have ordinations the second team of men is men that used to operate with it but they lost the way they lost the way you used to prophesy you used to pray. You know that thing is in you. You know it is in you. I know something happened along the way. But the Lord is saying today I'm not here to judge. I'm here to release mercy. Because of the urgency of a generation. Our scars will become the platform of our preaching. Some of us we don't preach from our medals. We preach from our failures. Because whatever the devil had purpose for evil. The Lord has turned it around for our good. God is not looking for a perfect priest. Some of the scars. 
is what a generation is looking for who shall enter into the lesbian community and tell them i was one of you but now i'm born again unless you bear that scar and tell them this thing is not about what you feel it is bigger than that who shall stand and say i messed up my marriage i know what divorce means but out of this scar another marriage will not die we are not preaching from metals who shall arise and say i am now 50 i wasted my teenagehood in alcohol but not another one will die when i'm alive i am not here to call perfect men i am here to call lepers that will deliver a city the lord never looked for warriors in chariots he partnered with lepers he partnered with lepers and when the lepers arose there was deliverance over the city we are past during a leprous generation but in them Calabar, is the deliverance of nations i told the lord i don't want to be a pastor i i have addictions i have struggles i have weaknesses he said it's not about what you have it's about what i have for you he said that generation will not understand you when you open the Bible. They will understand you when you open your life. Show them my victory. Show them I can deliver a man from pornography. Show them I can deliver a man from lust. Show them I can deliver a man from secularism. Show them that I can deliver a man from Rastafarianism. Let the marks testify. When you want to pastor, you don't open the Bible. You open your life. When you want to disciple, you open the Bible. Church, listen to me. God is not waiting for perfect men. He's waiting for men that can rise from the ashes. Because a righteous man may fall seven times. But when he rises, that man knows what made him fall. He knows the pit. He understands the place. He knows how to get out. The problem is not falling. The problem is staying fallen. Let the devil not preach to you. I stand here to tell you we are products of grace. Oh. We are victims of mercy. If, if I was to volunteer a preacher, my name will not appear. I know perfect men. I know men who live by the mountains. But how will they know the mercies of God? And I'm not here to say that we now abuse it. But he that is forgiven much appreciates much because they know the devil would have taken us around alive but now we are here to declare the goodness of the lord in the land of the living and i want to announce over my generation rise from the pitfall rise from the pitfall don't cancel yourself it is not yet over our scars will become our metals the devil is a liar let the generation arise let them arise Oh, the enemy. Kalabo Shatalaba. says we are emblems of mercy I'm another portrait of mercy a few years ago we were drunkards in this city but here is mercy my generation I want to tell you I don't it doesn't matter what you're struggling with right now this could be you two years to come I didn't hear you this could be you two years to come this could be you three years to come you are not too far from the mercy of God 
God is about to lift some of you in a glorious way. If you believe it, if you believe it with your heart, if you believe the word that has been spoken, I want you to raise a mighty shout to the Lord. Come on, Ramafi! I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Celebrate! Can we celebrate the voice of God? An apostle in our generation. Come on, celebrate Apostle T for being used in a mighty way. Wow, what an amazing, amazing word. And our lives shall never be the same again. You may have your seat. You know, when he was telling, when he was telling stories about fathers, I remember the story. I'm a storyteller. So let me tell you a story. In around 92, I think around 92, 93, Bishop Mark came to Embu. We were living in Embu, and I was, uh, I think I was in class three, and he did a crusade. And when he did that crusade in Embu, uh, he finished on the last day, he called people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I was a young boy, but I knew this thing about being filled with the Holy Spirit. See me standing, speaking in tongues. Okay, it's only that they lied to us, it was above us. But can we celebrate the fathers in the land? Let's celebrate the fathers. We are pictures of your labor. We are the marks of the labor you have done. That is not how we celebrate our fathers in the land. Come on, be on your feet and let us celebrate the fathers in the land. Celebrate them. We honor you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Celebrate Reverend Julian. Celebrate him. Thank you for this, sir. In Jesus' name. Philippians 4.16 Philippians 4.16 My assignment here is uh, to make sure that we give this even this day Philippians 4.16 Are you there? It says, for even in Thessalonica you sent aid once and again for my necessities Next verse, the Bible says Not that I seek the gift but I seek the fruit that abounds into your account If you have the amplified version i really appreciate if you give it to me uh you know when he began he said something very interesting he said um if, if you have the other amplified he said something very interesting he said one of the problem of the church is that we are not eternity eternity centered and i want to say this that today we better give with the mind of eternity for even in the Salonica, you sent me contribution for my needs not only once but a second time next verse he says, not that I seek or I'm eager of your gift, but I do seek and I'm eager of the fruit of your increase to your credit. Where? You know, the King, the King James Version says, to your credit. He says, the harvest of blessing accumulating in your account. Look at your neighbor and tell them, not your bank account. Are you hearing me? He's talking another account. This account is not a physical account. This account is a heavenly account. I didn't hear you. This account is a heavenly account. You know, the Bible says that he that gives to the Lord, he that gives to the poor, lends to the Lord. That means there is a giving that you do on earth, but in the heaven, God receives it as you have, you are, you, una nidai. it's a debt to me, which means as your as you're releasing money from your account to give in the heavens it is entering an account praise the lord there is an account in the heavens that that resource that you're giving for the sake and the furtherance of the gospel the resource that you're releasing is not living your life it's entering an eternal account that you will draw one of these days in the name of jesus i want you to get your offering get your offering get a good offering get a sacrifice apostle t has told us sacrifices are big get a sacrifice know that that sacrifice is not that just in this dimension get a sacrifice get a sacrifice make sure we we give we are not leaving this uh, we are not leaving rema feast with any debt is that okay we are not living with any debts. There will be, get an envelope. If you need an envelope, the ushers have the envelopes. The ushers have the envelopes all over. 
please get an envelope. The giving details are there. You can, you can, uh, you can do the star three, three, four hash, or you can use the other one to give. And then the envelopes will be available, but also the buckets will be available on the aisles for you to be able to give. Are you ready to give? I cannot hear you. Are you ready to give? Are you ready to give? This will alter your life in the name of Jesus. And so let us, are you, you can give. There are PDQ machines, just in case you want to give, to swipe their PDQ machines. You can swipe, you can give via checks, you can, you can give via M-Pesa, PayPal, whichever way you can do via SendWave, but make sure you give in Jesus' name. Okay, lift up your offering. Let me pray so that we can get to the next session. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the most generous givers on this side of the earth. Father, we thank you that you will increase them. You will multiply them. There will be nothing missing in their lives. There will be nothing broken. We decree that this is being credited into their account in the name of Jesus. Their lives after today as they give shall never be the same again. Let this sacrifice and offering speak for them. In the name of Jesus! Amen, amen. And, and, and now I want to ask the worship team. Thank you. You're welcome. Buona Sifiwe! Praise the Lord! Uh -huh. I want us to praise the Lord together. Can we rise up? I'm about to tour. We give, we give, we give, we give. We give.
us all to stand. Can we stand up and praise the Lord? Wherever you are, can we stand? Can you turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor you are blessed? Ambia jirani ume barikiwa. Tell your neighbor you are highly favored. Tell your neighbor you are great. Tell your neighbor you will not walk out of here the same way. Now on the count of three, I want us to give Jesus a mighty, mighty shout. Tuko tayari. Come on, aniona kule nyuma. Punga, 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 tu, punga, tu. Punga, tu, punga, tu. On the count of three, I want us to give Jesus the mightiest of shouts. Are we ready? One, two, three. Somebody give Jesus a shout. I said give Jesus.
declaration this this morning that you are more than enough we lift up our hearts our minds our bodies our spirits and our souls to declare that you are everything we need that all our sufficiency is found in you and so father this day we continue to declare that you are the prize you are the object of our affection and as we gather here today lord our hearts are open we continue to say that we are ready for you. We are ready for your move. We are ready for your power. Come and visit us again, we pray. In Jesus' name, and the body of Christ said, and the body of Christ said, 
Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Come on, Ramaphis, give the Lord some praise. Amen. Thank you so much, Life Church. Limuru, the Lord bless you. Would you want to appreciate them as well? A great job they've certainly done. Buona Yesua Sifiwe. You can have your seats for just a few moments. Once again, my name is Joyce Omondi Waihiga. An honor to be here this afternoon. And uh, I understand that there were some countries and counties that we hadn't gotten to recognize. And so I understand people from DRC, are you in the house? Okay, there you are. <laughs> we have from Barbados. They might not be here right now. But also we had people from various counties. Narok. We have people from Kajiado, from Kitui, from Baringo, from West Pokot. Clearly, Rema Feast is about uniting the body of Christ from denominations, but also from geographies. And you know, our speaker, our next speaker, is one such man. He was born in one place, but has gone and occupied a different territory, not just in this continent, but Pale Huko Europe. And we want to just be able to receive from the grace that he is carrying today. He spoke to us about altars and rediscovering the power of the altar earlier this week and how encounters and true worship are so important for us to be able to achieve that which God wants us to do. Are you ready to hear from him once again? Please turn your attention to the screens. John Sago is the founder of NIC, an apostolic and prophetic church with the headquarters based in Biel, Switzerland, with branches across Switzerland, United Kingdom, Ghana, and the U.S. If there is any time, Europe needs God. He is the visionary behind the Push Weekend Conference, a stadium event designed to touch the lives of people across Europe. God has blessed John Sago with an accurate gift of prophecy. He has been privileged to collaborate and minister to government officials in different levels. John Sago believes in reaching the unreached. He founded Safe Haven, a nonprofit organization that reaches out to street children and to the less privileged in society. He has founded a children's home, built a school in Accra, Ghana, and is in the process of building more in rural areas. He is a sought after mentor for a wide range of topics, and as a result, he has published various books, including First Fruit, Putting First Things First, 31 Keys of Successful Living, Encounter Your Soul, and Rediscovering the Power of the Altar, all available in different languages. Ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation, let us welcome John Sago, founder of NIC. All the way from Switzerland, and now in Nairobi, the home of Rama Feast. Please welcome Apostle John Sago. Let's give it up for Jesus. Let's celebrate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Come on, Rima First 2024. Can we give it up for our King? He is worthy to be praised. He is our Redeemer. He is our Savior. He deserves all the glory and honor. Do it one more time for Jesus. Give it to Him. Give it to Him. Give it to Him. Give it to Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to 
prepare you because I believe without no shadow of doubt that multitude or multiplication of miracles is about to take place here. I believe that this session, somebody is moving from ordinary to supernatural. I believe that this session, the sick will be healed. The oppressed will be set free. The captive will be delivered. They are, the blind, spiritually, physically, will be opened in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I receive it. So be in expectation for a miracle, even as we share the word of God. But as I was walking into the arena today, what I saw in the realms of the spirit before I go into the protocol, I saw angels. I saw angels encamping all over this stadium. And the Lord said that today is a special day in Rima Fest. This is the day of supernatural. Hey! It is the day of supernatural. I saw angels carrying financial breakthroughs. I saw angels carrying land documents land documents that is being released i saw angels carrying marital favor i saw angels coming with breaking of barrenness i saw angels lifting people from nothing to something i saw angels destroying every power of setback in your life hallelujah so this session get ready because the angels are all around this arena and they are carrying your miracles they are carrying your breakthroughs they are carrying your signs and wonders they are carrying your open doors can I prophesy to somebody by Monday before you get to your place of work a testimony will be waiting for you hey can I tell somebody the Lord said I should tell you by the time you get to your office on Monday they will serve you a letter of promotion I don't know who I come to talk to, but I hear that the Lord says I should tell somebody. Don't worry, that visa is ready. Anywhere they have rejected you, visa, Ayakata. Get ready because next time you are going, the door is open. Somebody say, I receive it. Say, I receive it. For the third time, say, I receive. Give Jesus a big clap. Oh, go ahead, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate the one that is giving you all these miracles. Rejoice in advance for the breakthrough. Rejoice in advance for the testimonies. Rejoice in advance for the blessings. Somebody say, I receive it. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My God, my God. Before we go into ministration, I want to thank God for the life of my brother and whom I have really begun to say, I will move our relationship from brotherhood to covenanthood. Is that okay? Yes. Because when God called people together in the kingdom, 
you you have to understand that it's not just for one time it's for a lifetime and that's how i feel in this connection with reverend julian can we celebrate him can we celebrate the set man of the house the visionary of the house can we celebrate the angel of the house go ahead and celebrate him thank you man of god we are proud of you we are thankful and thank you for the privilege we don't take it for granted that god has used you to pioneer this glorious work in the nation of kenya east africa we want to salute you and salute the grace of god upon your life somebody say amen and we celebrate your family can we celebrate the wife the children go ahead can we thank god for their life can we thank god for their life i'm a family man and i believe in the power of our children and our wives somebody say amen and it's a a privilege to get to know bishop jb the one and only father of the land can we celebrate the man of god hallelujah can we celebrate the man of god come on rima face can you help me to celebrate the man of god celebrate our father hallelujah let, let me let me let me explain you why i say you are the one and only i didn't mean that there is no other fathers in the land but you are the one and only father for reverend julian and if god used you to bring him this far then you are doing great work in the kingdom so we don't need to ask we don't need to know what you have done before as far as what we can see now is consigned we know that you are a great father can we celebrate the father one more time <laughs> hallelujah god bless you thank you very much for being obedient to the call and we want to celebrate our mama the wife of bishop go ahead let's celebrate her celebrate her for me hallelujah celebrate our mama god bless you god bless you thank you and we celebrate also the life of all the leaders i have greeted one of the fathers in the land when i came in before god bless you can we celebrate him also our bishop that is in the house celebrate him as well hallelujah god bless you man of god thank you thank you and thank you for all the great men and women of god more especially that is serving in this ministry ruach assemble thank you for the great work that you are doing for the kingdom amen we don't take it for granted we we know that god will reward you for your labor of love and you will continue to grow from glory to glory because this is a blessed house amen and you are serving the right altar somebody say amen and all our guest ministers that have come from different nations of the world and those that are hooking up online we say may god richly bless you and thank you for standing with this vision for what god is doing in such a time as this somebody say amen uh, the, the the conversation or the word that the lord have given to me concerning the nation of kenya is nothing but talking to you about breaking the altar of poverty somebody said the altar of poverty and uh, and talking about breaking the altar of poverty it also means that we are going to be looking at the topic of altar because the topic of altar is very very important so for that reason uh, towards the end of my message uh, i'm going to be releasing many of you to come and have this book to come and have this book on rediscovering the power of the altar because i'm going to be teaching from this book and i'm i'm going to be releasing I, I i have about maybe 400 left i came with 500 of them i have about 400 left so we're going to make sure that the 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 ones that we come forward are going to get it before i leave somebody say amen because when i finish 
teaching today, you need to take this home so that you can continue to move this conference and this entire meeting to a higher level. Somebody say amen. And that's what the books are meant for. Somebody say amen. So when we talk about altar, because today I want to go straight into it and then I'm going to release a few prophetic words along the line and then we're going to go into ministration. Like I said, the angels are here and when the angels are here, they make the work easy for you so you don't really need to struggle. You know, I want to say, I don't know about you, but I want to say that all the men and women of God that have graced this altar in the last couple of days, God have used them through men dustly. Can we give a big clap offering to all the servants of God that God has used mightily to grace this altar? Hallelujah. And as far as I'm concerned, some of the messages that I was privileged to hear you know, from the guest ministers, you know, that came in. I'm telling you, God really used every one of us because everyone was aligning to the message that God has put in the heart of the set man of the house, the, the convener of this wonderful conference. Every one of us was aligning to the message God has put in his, in his heart. But not only that, we were also at the same time coming from different dimensions. But if you look at the total package, you will understand that we are speaking one message. We are all speaking one message, but we are all coming from different dimensions. Somebody say different dimension. For example, when I spoke for the first time, I believe that was Wednesday, when I, when I spoke for the first time, immediately after me was the Apostle Grace that came and spoke. And while I was dealing on the poverty mindset that is the root of all evil authors, he came and dealt with the slave mindset. Or this, I, how many of you remember that message? So, so you see, he came from another angle, but if you look at the totality of the what we are trying to communicate, we are trying to destroy the work of the devil and to lift up the name of the Lord. Is somebody with me? So that is the message that we carry, and the totality of what God has given to the man of God is that we are united in Christ Jesus. We are united in Christ jesus so therefore when we talk about the altar we are talking about altar is simple a place of covenant somebody say a place of covenant so altars are where covenants are made and sealed through sacrifice altars are where covenants are made and sealed through sacrifice this is why in Christianity terminology, accepting Jesus as your savior is referred to as an altar call. Are you with me? It signifies entering into a covenant with God. So when we say we are accepting Jesus, every time we say we are accepting Jesus, like we saw last night, with apostle joshua selman when he finished his message he did one thing before he left and that was the last thing he did last night was an altar call for salvation somebody say an altar call for salvation why was that necessary for him to tell the people looking at the massive crowd that we have in this stadium ground why was it necessary for him to say that that they must all come to the altar because what they are coming to do is that they are coming to covenant they are coming to break bread they are coming to come in fellowship they are coming to come in contact with god so the introduction of our christian journey began with altar hallelujah 
the introduction of our Christian journey begin with altar because you come for the altar call so that you can encounter God in on his altar now that's why it is important if you look at the days of the Bible, you will understand that in the days of the Bible, that when God encounter anybody, there will always be an altar erected. When God encountered the man Noah, there was an altar built. When God encountered the man Abraham, there was an altar built. When God encountered Isaac, there was an altar. When God encountered Jacob, there was an altar. When God encountered Joshua, there was an altar. When God encountered David, there was an altar. Anytime God encounters somebody, they will erect an altar as a sign that God has visited them. Somebody say amen. And therefore, we want Kenya to know that in this time and season, because altar is originated from God, therefore, you must not take this subject lightly. You must open your eye to understand that if there is a good altar, then it means there might be an evil altar. You didn't hear what I'm saying. Because there is no counterfeit without the original. There is no evil without good. There is no darkness without light. Is somebody hearing me? And I want you to know because there is God of the altar. Because God originated altar. God is the creator of altar. Before you even think about questioning the topic of the altar don't forget that there is nothing that was created that was not created by god hallelujah everything that was created was created by god the bible says that the earth is the lord and everything in it belongs to him so therefore altar was created by god and god created an altar like i gave you last time the introduction and the definition of an altar altar is a place of sacrifice hallelujah and therefore because it's a place of sacrifice it become also a place of encounter because there is no altar without a sacrifice and there is no sacrifice without the presence of god am i speaking to somebody because anywhere you see an altar you will see the sacrifice and anywhere you see sacrifice you will see the presence of God and so Satan has perverse what God originally meant to use to bless us he has perverse it and now he's using it to advance his kingdom instead of using it to do what God has planned for it originally he's now using it to destroy life but I came to tell you that this is the time we are about to possess our possession this is the time we are about to recover everything that belongs to us this is the time we are about to go to the next level and say to Satan enough is enough Kenya will not succumb to evil altar this nation was built on the altar of God and we are going back to the original am I preaching to somebody we are going back to the original this nation was not meant for devil to take over it was not meant for devil to mess it around this nation was built for God and for God people so we are rising as an army and we are getting back everything God has given to us altar somebody say altar so I want you to know that in Christianity our terminology is that Jesus is our sacrificial lamb. And if Jesus is our sacrificial lamb, then it means that in Jesus, the new covenant altar has been established. And if the new covenant altar has been established in Jesus, then we all 
when we give our life to Jesus, then we are unifying. We are coming in unity. We are coming in oneness. We are coming in wholeness into one altar, one mega altar. And that altar is Jesus Christ. Somebody clap your hand and give him all the glory. So through Jesus' death, he's, he established a new covenant. He was the ultimate sacrifice. His cross, the ultimate altar. Altar are real. And without understanding them, you will never be overcome or to be able to overcome the work of the enemy. You will never be overcomer. God initiated altar so that you and I can live a victorious life. Without an altar, you lack the spiritual foundation and authority necessary to engage in a certain aspect of spiritual battles. Am I speaking to somebody? Therefore, evil authors, if left unchecked, can cause a havoc not only in our lives, but also in the lives of our descendants. Unless we confront and dismantle the power of this evil author, our generation is in trouble. Because you don't fight the spiritual with a carnal mind. If you're going to fight the spirit, you're going to go into the realms of the spirit. And we are in the battle of authors. Is somebody hearing me? We are in the battle of authors. And that is why last time we were dealing on the spirit of addition. And we were dealing on different spirits. Because all these spirits are manifest on the altar of sacrifice. Listen, don't be naive. The reason why your children are addicted to pornography, addicted to drug, addicted to this, addicted to that, addicted to all kinds of evil is because there is an altar somewhere there is an altar that is receiving a sacrifice there is an altar receiving a sacrifice on daily basis to keep your children in doing evil to keep your children in going down to keep your children in manifesting devil activities and we come today to decree and declare that any evil altar I say any evil altar. Somebody clap your hands. I say any evil altar. Fighting against my family. I lift up my hands. And I decree and declare. Enough is enough. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So watch this. Evil authors, somebody say evil authors, are there to intercept, to hinder, and to limit the assignment that God has in our life. So every nation operate in three dimensions of authors. Every nation operate in three dimensions of authors. Number one, every nation operate in an altar that we call family altars family altars now remember this every one of us more especially if you are an african descent you will notice that before the gospel came to us before the gospel came to us you can literally find I don't know about East Africa, but I can tell you in West Africa, you can literally find almost every family that has a wooden God somewhere that they are worshiping. They have a wooden God somewhere that they are pouring libration. 
they are going to sacrifice whether it is a chicken it is an animal it is a goat but they are always sacrificing and uh, and so that 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 altar is the voice of the family and that altar determine how far people can go in the family that altar is responsible for who deliver in the family and who doesn't deliver who married and who doesn't marry and more often than none that altar is a confrontation of the deity or is the confrontation of the ancestors that have died are you with me I'm going somewhere, stay with me because this is deep. Because if we can get this, we will know why some things is happening in our family. We will know why we are prayed and prayed and there is no result. You know why there is some certain things reoccurring in our family, reoccurring in our nation, reoccurring in our marriages. There is some certain things that reoccur over and over again because there is an altar that have not been confronted. And that's why God said this African boy all the way from Switzerland to come and speak to any author in your family that is stopping you from progressing that enough is enough clap your hand and say enough is enough oh clap your hand and say every evil author out of my family now nah. hallelujah hallelujah so 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 we have what we call the family altars. So the family altars, let, let, let me sh tell you a short story. In my family, I used to live with my aunt, and my aunt have an altar, this kind of wooden gods that I'm talking about. And so as a boy, as I was growing up, uh, I see that this wooden god is placed in a corner in the bedroom where my aunt lives. So my aunt used to live in two rooms, uh, two rooms apartment, you know. And so one is the bedroom, the other one is the living room. So the bedroom is where she has put this wooden god. So every time she wake up from sleep, she will go and be talking to this wooden god and be telling this wooden god, this is what I want you to do for me. This is how I want you to do it. And etc. etc. But at the end, she will drop some money at the wooden god as a sacrifice. And every now and then, she will kill either an animal, whether a goat or sometimes a fowl. She will just kill a blood flowing animal and pour a bit of the blood around the altar, around the wooden god, and then she believed that because of that wooden god, that's why she's still alive, that's why she's prospering, that's why whatever. So one day, as, a, as small as I was, I said to myself, I'm going to see if this god of my auntie, if he has a voice, I'm going to see. So I decided when my auntie was not at home to go and help myself with all the monies, all the money that have been put around the gods. So I carry all the money and then I stare the God. I say, I hope you are not seeing me. Don't tell my auntie. So I left. And then when my auntie come back, my auntie did not notice that there was a money that was missing. And I say, hey, this is working, oh. Yeah, that's how we say it in West Africa. Somebody say, oh, is there my Nigerian brothers in the house? Is there some Nigerians here? So, 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 my, by the way, my mother is a Nigerian. So, my auntie I'm talking about is from the Nigerian side of the family. My father is a Ghanaian. So, and I'm a Swiss citizen. So, I'm a United Nations person. You understand? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah so 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 i said i i realized that this thing the when my auntie came back nothing no report no complaint no anything uh, and then i said wow this is easy money so every time my auntie put money to the gods i will pick it up so at me and the god will become a partner because my auntie is the giver i am the receiver and my auntie think that the god is eating the money 
you didn't hear what I said. I, I said my auntie thought that the God was eating the money. He didn't know that there is another God called John Sego that is going to ayakata bosi yakata. And and listen, this is the revelation I got. I I'm, I don't recommend it for anybody, please, because if you go and do it and you don't have a future, you don't have a calling, that evil altar might destroy you. But this is the revelation I got from it. Even though I was not yet a minister, even though I was not yet a principality, but even in my small age, the altar fear me because he knows that in future I'm going to terrorize them. Hey, akata bakata. Let me tell somebody, I don't know what altar that is fighting you from your family. I don't know what altar that is harassing you for your family. But I want you to know, your future is bright and you are an overcomer. Clap your hand and say, I am an overcomer. Hallelujah. So, so family authors. So that means by that gesture, by that act that I was doing, I was showing disagreement with that family author. And I was declaring to the sin and unseen world, even though I did not realize it, I was declaring to the sin and unseen world that I have no covenant with this author. I was declaring that I am the enemy of this altar. I am the opposite of this altar. This altar cannot be my God. I somebody understanding where we are going. I want you to know because anything you never disagree will become your God. He began to rule over you. Anything you never confront will defeat you eventually because he will walk against you. So it is important that you know that an altar is a place in the family that can speak according to the belief of those people that are worshiping that altar that is responsible for their welfare is responsible for their future is responsible for their well-being and i will tell you that because of the mindset i have as a boy i always believe that my life is different in the family i always believe that I'm, I'm special because when I was growing up, listen, when I was growing up, there come a time that when I look around my family, I realize that even my own mother have gone, those days, there is something that we call ECOWAS passport. ECOWAS passport simply means a passport that you can use to travel only within the West Africa. I, is somebody with me? And so my mother have that ECOWAS passport. But listen carefully, the highest achievement my mother could achieve was to have ECOWAS passport, but she has never traveled outside the country. So my mom, every now and then, we take that passport and she will be celebrating it. She'll be celebrating that, look, I have achieved a passport. I have achieved a passport. So when I was growing up around 16 years old, and my mom keep doing this, and I said to myself, what kind of God are we serving that you can only have a passport and you can never travel with it? So one day I decided to ask my mom a question. So I asked my mom, what is it that you are always holding and celebrating? She said, it's an international passport. I said, mama, international passport what does this what was it for he says for traveling outside the country i say mama have you ever traveled outside the country she said no i say mama but why are you celebrating with the passport that you have and you have never used it for the purpose that you have it for he says shut up what do you know do you is it easy to get a passport i'm telling you that i've achieved something and then i say to myself i will not only get a passport but i will travel to many nations Because there was an altar that was speaking against the family for people not to go to a certain level. So I said to myself, I am not going to get a passport and celebrate it, but I am going to travel to many nations. Brothers and sisters, I can no more count how many nations I have been. But not only that I have been in that nation, but I have several passports of several countries. Because you must learn how to defeat the evil author of the family. And then number two is what we call the nation author. The nation author. Or if you like, 
you can already go to the second level and call it the regional altar. The regional altar can be an altar of your family. Like you hear things like, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because there is an altar. There is an altar that is sure that if you are born as a Nazareth, nothing good can come out of you. You hear things like, can anyone come out of Manasseh and become a blessed person? Can a great man, can a warrior, can a leader come out of Manasseh? Because there is what we call a, a, a national or regional altar if you like which has to deal with your town your village your city where you live and those altars are responsible for your going forward in life so that's why we even up to today if somebody come out of a region today and become a president of kenya it will shock kenya because nobody have risen from that particular place and become a president so that's why you are shocked because you never believe that a president or a, a person of importance can come out of that place because there is an altar devil is a liar i came to tell somebody it doesn't matter the town where you come from it doesn't matter the village where you come from there is no altar there is no evil altar that can limit you from going forward in the name of Jesus I don't care if you are the least in your family you are rising above every limitation clap your hand and say I break evil altar hallelujah so, so in my case I'm probably one of the first recognized priests pastor evangelist whatever you like to call me i'm probably the very first recognized in the international level from my own region is somebody hearing me because somebody understand the dynamics of the wicked authors and somebody have to rise above that spirit and say that evil spirit that is responsible for people not to rise to the top in our village in our town in our city he will not walk against me and that's what i came to tell somebody i don't know what is working against you from your region from your village from wherever you come from and people are saying there is nothing good that can come out of that place after this rumor first you will be the first to break the limitation somebody say break the limit hallelujah hallelujah so so regional altar can decide how far you can go in life regional altar can decide if you will rise or not let me tell you if you dare want to rise he will put all manner of stop in your way either he disgrace you either he cause you to enter into problem or he cause people to embarrass you but i came to tell somebody the last attack you see will be the last attack that will happen to your life because any evil author speaking against you will be smashed to pieces somebody say i receive it so the third author is what we call national author national author i was privileged to be invited in the nation of Eswatini, former Swaziland in South Africa. And, uh, and when I arrived there, the Lord gave me this message of author to speak in February this year. And then my host managed to arrange that on my arrival, they will pick me and drive me straight to their national radio station which is mainly listening to most, mostly the entire population. So they took me from the airport and they drove me to their national radio station and they say, man of God, speak to the nation. Let them know that you are here for a program and etc. etc. So I began to prophesy to the nation 
And uh, according to the things God was revealing to me, uh, one of the things I was prophesying had to do with their medical institution. And then I was prophesying in the direction of their educational institution. And I was prophesying in different areas. And then I was beginning to touch on the message of altar. And I was beginning to tell them that the reason why they are facing those challenges in those different places is because of the evil altar that is speaking against the nation. And the little do I know that as I was delivering that message, one of the sister of the king one of the sister of the king uh, happens to be coming out of parliament and put on her radio in her car and was listening to my message and so she was so touched with the message that she says that the message that this man of god carry is not just a message for a conference this is a message for our nation so she says i will i will make sure that i meet with the royal family and that before he leave time wherever he is we must get hold of him and we must invite him to speak in our national altar and so and so that's what she did she makes sure that they go they get hold of me and they invite me on Thursday and they say come and speak and they took me they literally have a national altar they have an altar where they have built as a church and they go there the royal family goes there regularly to worship and to pray and so that faithful day, they invite people, the wife of the prime minister, the royal family, everybody was there. And then I began to speak to the nation. And by the time I finished speaking, the, some of the you know, key people that were in the meeting that was making remark, they said, man of God, this message that you brought to us, we want you to know you have broken something in our nation you have set something loose in our nation because through the message we can sense the heaviness of the message was not dealing with a family altar but was dealing with a national altar so what is that what is a national altar a national altar is when a particular group of people start experiencing the same thing over and over and over again and that's why many African African nation today is like we are struggling with a national altar called poverty mindset that's my message that's my message it's like we are struggling with a national altar called poverty mindset so last time we were looking at the poverty mindset and we were saying what does it takes for us to understand what a poverty mindset is and we realize that a poverty mindset is not an upset absent of things it's not just an absent of material things but a poverty mindset can come as a result of a spirit somebody say a spirit it can come as a result of an altar an altar that is responsible in making us never to get things correct we always get things wrong and because we always get things wrong it has caused a big deep root in our foundation i remember many years ago i will not call the name of the nation just to, for dignity's sake i remember many years ago i enter a nation and I, I i began to prophesy and i said i see heavy corruption in this nation and i see heavy corruption in the government of this nation and the law says that if we don't approve this corruption this nation in three years we suffer a great devastation in this nation and then I was talking to one of the key leaders in that nation and do you know the reply that he gave to me he said man of God this thing you are talking about it has a deep root in our nation corruption can never be uprooted that's what he told me so that tells me that there is an evil author that has eaten into the system of our nation can somebody just get me a water something like water please so there is an evil author that has eaten deep into our nation that sometimes we end up calling bad good we end up calling evil good because we think this is part of our system this is part of our life this is who we are this is how we are 
devil is a liar. There is no nation under God that can never be changed. I want you to know evil cannot take over our nations and we cannot tolerate evil anymore. We cannot condone evil anymore. We cannot accept evil anymore because this is the time we must rededicate this nation to God and we must say enough is enough. Enough is enough. Because evil authors are responsible for us tolerating evil things. There is another nation I heard that apart from one person, every president of that nation has become a member of free mercenary. Do you hear what I said? In other words, for you to become a president in that nation, you must visit the evil author. If you are not ready to go through that route, you can never smell the seat of presidency because the ones that are ruling over the nation, they are members of those evil authors. And so we must come to a place in our nation to say we must not sell our nation we must not sell our country we must say no to evil author because evil author is responsible for our poverty mindset can i tell you the truth anytime you are moving in the spirit of poverty somebody is benefiting from it did you hear what i said i said somebody is benefiting from it listen number one when you see a man like me from africa look at what we are doing in switzerland and i don't want you to take it for granted because number one a nation like switzerland a nation like switzerland is not a nation that go to church are you with me it's not a nation that go to church and number two nation like switzerland when they go to church they are not going to church because of money they are not going to church because of what they will get because they are comfortable are you with me listen to me i, I a man of god visited me from africa he visited me in switzerland and uh, and and then our church was about i don't know maybe 100 people uh, in attendance and then i was lamenting i was lamenting i was complaining and i was telling the man of god i said oh i need i need our church to grow i need to have more members i need to have more members and the, and, and that man of god he was like a mentor to me so he said he said john relax this thing that you are complaining about don't you know that the quality of the swiss people you are winning for christ that if you have hundred of them don't you know that you can do more than a church in africa that have ten thousand people that's what he told me he said he said john he said john okay let's compare resources yeah and because this man of god was from a mega church he said let's compare resources he said i'm telling you i'm from a mega church in africa and i'm telling you that the resources i'm seeing you controlling here in switzerland with the people you say you have i'm telling you that is more than we that have ten thousand members in africa then he said something else that blew my mind you know because sometimes we like to compare ourselves with others we think oh because i don't have thousands of followers or millions of followers in uh, facebook and social media it means that i'm not doing anything but he said to me say john stop that because the people you are winning these are people that nobody was able to go and win them you and, and for you to come from africa and to pay the price that you are paying here and to sacrifice your life and bringing these people in their numbers to Christ you are doing something now let me show you let me show you before I continue there is a video I, just like one or two minutes I don't know where the media team is if you can show us that video I want to show them the video of the building that we actually our church current church building and the new building we are buying in this September and that I want you to see how we have taught occupy the street where we are you know can you show that video quickly i want you to see that 
look at this is my city this city have about 50,000 people in it this is the watch city of switzerland if you have ever heard about switzerland with watch this is where the rollers are so be, uh, so reverend when you come to switzerland you are coming back with rollers watch in jesus name this is where the rollers watch are so this is our current building you see it started from here and it goes all the way all the way all the way you see what where that white soundboard is is now the new property that we are we are acquiring and now you're going to see how it stretch all the way down but it's coming just keep watching keep watching it's going to keep stretching all that is our property is keep going keep going is our property we keep going and so all those buildings you are seeing belongs to us acquired by by the leadership of an african man keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going and then you see all the way stretch and all this place from here we have underground parking underground parking and it stretch all the way you see from this building all the way to the street there belongs to a church it belongs to a church of jesus christ in europe is heart of europe switzerland we are only four percent christian man of god four percent it's only four percent christian in the city where i'm doing this is our church the inside of our church our current church building the only the place i'm doing this work in the city i live that i'm shaking the kingdom of darkness like this is is a place that have only fifty thousand people and four percent of them are christian hallelujah you see all those building all what you are seeing is the property we have and at the end they're going to show you bishop, uh, man of god at the end they're going to show you the new location in that property in that property where we are building affordable home so that's why i connect to your vision we are building affordable home and we are, we are you will see this one this one we are starting with 12 block of flats 12 block of flats and we are only giving it to kingdom citizens we are giving it to christians so that we can worship god to the glory of the lord i want you to know that i don't know where you are today but any evil altar that is ravaging your family any evil altar that is speaking against your family clap your hand and say ah! hey you see those buildings everywhere you see you see those buildings it all belongs to us it, because we believe in the power of breaking the altar of poverty i don't know who i came to speak to but any altar of poverty that is speaking against your life speaking against your family speaking against you i decree and declare if god can use this african man in the center of europe you will be using the name of jesus hey somebody clap your hands in the name of jesus say every evil altar speaking against my life speaking against my family speaking against my region speaking against my nation every evil altar altar of poverty as i clap my hand and as i begin to pray out 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 lift up your voice and pray now lift up your voice lift up your voice lift up your voice lift up your voice you will take a new territory you will take a new territory you will take a new territory lift up your voice something is about to happen pray 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 rekataraba manderia bakatu Rika Taria Bande, Imande Lebro Kotoria, Rika Taria Bande, lift up your voice. We are breaking evil at us. 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 You can never go down. You are rising up. Every poverty mindset, every poverty mentality, you shall overcome in the name of Jesus. Shh. keep standing we are going into administration 
Can the musicians come quickly? I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. There is, there is so much anointing here. There is so much glory here. There is so much power here. There is so much miracle here. I, I, I feel the anointing of God in this place. And, and listen, listen carefully. Because I told you that the angels of the Lord, they are all over this place. And, and I can tell you, even though I try very, very hard in the last two days, or in the last two sessions that I have, I was not able to touch 10% of the revelation that God gave to me concerning broken the altar of poverty that is written only in the chapter 5 of this book. I didn't touch any of the other chapters. So this book is dangerously loaded. Somebody said dangerously loaded. Anyone that have this book, I'm telling you, you will be amazed how God will turn your life around. The revelation you will have. Uh, we have been having, this book was released in June this year. We have been having countless testimonies. I don't have time to share all those testimonies. Sometimes we men of God and women of God, we move in another frequency. You come to share some things and the Holy Spirit will arrest you and take you into heavenly time. And by the time you zoom back to earth, your time is gone. So, so because of that, I want to move into the second phase of this assignment. But here is what the Lord told me. Where is Bishop James Minor? Bishop James, come. Where is your wife? Come with your wife. As I was ministering, the Lord gave me a prophetic word for both of you. As I was ministering, in the realms of the spirit, the Holy Ghost opened my eyes. And then I saw you, and I saw you be lifted up. And then I said, God, why? Why are you lifting this man of God up? And God says, I'm lifting you up because the things that is about to happen in your ministry is going to move like a speed, like you have never seen it before. Because an acceleration is about to happen. Because I see both of you. You were in an airplane, and that airplane was moving in a speed that have never been seen before. So in the natural, when I look at it, I was getting afraid because I thought it was going to crash. And I say, where are they going? Oh Lord, have mercy on them. But in the, in the spiritual, it was the speed of God. You were moving in the speed of God. And when you were landing, you were landing in a big auditorium. And I asked God, what does that represent? God says that this is an assignment that I'm connecting you to. Wait, and then I asked the Lord, What exactly is that assignment for? And the Lord says, I'm bringing you to be somebody that is going to be behind the scene, and you're going to be joining hand with mega ministry like the one of Reverend Julian and many others for the move of God that is coming to Kenya. And the Lord says, what I'm doing in your life and the life of your wife is going to be amazing because you have entered a season that whatever I have told you to do, you will be joining with the right people in this season. And God is going to take you to the next level and not only national, but international. <laughs> In the spirit, in the spirit, I saw in the realms of the spirit, I know what I'm about to say, it sounds like it's very common, but I'm going to obey God. It's better to obey God than to obey man. I'm going to obey God. It will sound very common because in a crowd like this, you don't call name because there is very tendency that one person will have that name. Are you with me? But for the sake of obeying God, there is somebody here, your name is Tony. 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 
if you are here come quickly to the front your name is tony and maybe there'll be several of you but i will pick the right person there'll be several of you but i'll pick the right person please come come quickly because i must address you when i see you come quickly 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 Rekete reboshi andaraba. Can you stand there for me, please? Stand there for me. Karabashi andaraba. Yes, yes. Your name is Tony. Run, 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 run. And I'm gonna address what I'm gonna address. Now listen to me. When you hear prophecies like this, sometimes it can be for the people that come, but it can also be for you wherever you are. If you are watching online, it can be for you. Just catch it. Somebody say catch it. Just catch it because if the explanation of the prophecy fit you and fit your life, just say, I receive it for myself. Listen, I, wa I was one day prophesying for somebody that doesn't have a job in my church. And the person was standing in front and I called the person by name. He came forward and I was prophesying to the person and I said, by this time next week, God is going to give you a job. The person was not receiving it. The usher behind that I didn't call the name, say, I receive it. The next week, the usher got a job. The person didn't get a job. That's prophecy. So, 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 spoken word come with power and authority. It's like a spirit. And so, anyone that catches it is yours. Somebody say it's mine. Somebody say it's mine. Somebody say it's mine. Okay, for the sake of what I just explained now, uh, when you were coming at you, the Lord say, I'm talking to you. But for the sake of what I just explained, all of you should stay here and catch it. Somebody say, catch it. The Lord showed me in the realms of the spirit. And as I saw in the realms of the spirit, I saw you, you know, you have been trying to break forth into a new dimension. And the Lord said, you are entering a season of that dimension because of covenant. Because of covenant. The Lord said, because of covenant, I'm opening the door for you to go to another dimension. Because what you have been struggling to get, the Lord said, you shall struggle no more. Because covenant has brought you this far. And the Lord said, if you can be faithful to submit to the ministry he has brought you in, if you can be faithful to submit, by this time next year, you will be a mega mugu in your business, in everything you touch, in the name of Jesus. Pakataba. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive my portion of this miracle. Breakthrough must happen in my life now because my name is Tony or Anthony. I receive the word from the man of God. Therefore, I break every order of poverty. Fire! Kataba sekete. Maria bakataraba. Receive it. Fire! 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is somebody here. You have been pregnant, but you are overdue. You are overdue, and you have not yet delivered. You have been pregnant, but you are overdue, and you have not yet delivered. If you are here, run to the altar. Find your way to the altar. There is an evil altar that is fighting your baby, and I must speak to your womb. I must speak to your womb, because that baby must come out. Run, 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 if you are the one. If you are the one, Rabakata. Sheke Tereba. Marebo Shikitara, There is another person. There is another person in the realms of the spirit. As I was talking, there is another person. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Everybody, lift up. Worshippers, can you lift up the song for me? You are the Lord that He led me. You are the Lord, my healer. And heal. Shakata base keterebo. You. Ora katara basi andaraba. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hand. God is healing you right now. The angel of the Lord is breaking limitation. The angel of the Lord is breaking limitation. The angel of the Lord is doing miracles. You sent your word. Yes, yeah, somebody. Shh. Please walk with me. I have only a few minutes to go. There is somebody here. Like I said, you are struggling with pregnancy. You are struggling with pregnancy. The last pregnancy you have, it was even overdue. But you lost the baby. You lost the baby. If you are here, come. I want to pray for you. And you, if you are here, and every time you are pregnant, there is a miscarriage. There is a miscarriage. Come, run. I want to pray for you. We are dealing with something that you cannot see with your eye. But we are addressing those things in the spirit. And we must uproot them in the name of Jesus. That's why we came to Rima first. We came to Rima first. So that our life will never remain the same. Somebody say, I receive it. Please come. Let them come. Let them come. Let them come. Let them line up here. Let them line up here. Please allow them to come. I see them running. Allow them to come. 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 Thank you. Open up your hands. Open up your hands. Yes. You are the Lord that he led me. My, my I will address those that are pregnant now. I will pray for those that are pregnant now and then I will pray for those that have miscarriage. You are the Lord, my healer. My healer. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. That he let me. You are Maria the Lord. Church, be in prayer, be in prayer. 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 One of the miracles that will become normal in this Rema Fest is going to be miracle of babies. Miracle of babies. This is going to become a ground where people will come that are looking for the fruit of the womb. And they will, after each Rima fest, there will be a celebration of people that has conceived to the glory of the Lord. Miracle babies. Miracle babies. And listen to me. There is no Rima feast baby. There is no Rima fest baby that will never be great in life. Because they are conceived on the altar of greatness and because they are conceived on this altar they will grow to be mega in life so therefore if you are here and you are expecting God to give you your own baby you are struggling with conceiving for with conception come and join them if you are here you are struggling and the listen the qualification is that you must be married let's be clear somebody say amen yeah the qualification is what you must be married if you come here you are not married i will disgrace you i will tell the whole world that you are sleeping around you don't have a husband but if you are married and you are struggling with a miracle child or you are struggling with conception please come because while i was praying the lord showed me that the altar of evil is responsible for childlessness 
for childlessness I don't know why God take me this direction completely but I want to be obedient to what God is doing I want to be obedient to what God please come a little bit closer because they are coming very massive come a bit closer come a bit closer to the altar you that are here come a bit closer come a bit closer come a bit closer come a bit closer and then I'm, I'm going to declare afterwards what God told me concerning this ministry Ruach Assemble I have a prophecy for you I have a prophecy for you hallelujah Shaka Tabasekete please lift up your hands be in prayer you are the Lord lift up your hands and begin to pray begin to pray if you are in front begin to pray because every evil attack in your family every evil attack in your husband family in your wife family if you are a man can you can you guys sing just slowly so that i can minister because of time can you just sing behind listen if you are here and you are a man and your wife is not here you can come and stand and if your wife is here and the husband is here come together it takes two to conceive it takes two because some of you your problem is coming from the altar in your family from your father's side other is coming from your mother's side other is coming from the side of the husband other one is coming from the side of the wife lift up your hands and be, be prayerful be prayerful father lift up your hands i ask please lift up your hands if you are in front lift up your hands lift up your hands the spirit of god is about to invade your life now i use this woman here uh, sorry i use this woman here as a point of contact and i pray for all the pregnant women that i first call out that is struggling thou say the lord the lord said there is no need to be afraid because today the lord has entered your situation and the lord has come to rescue you and the lord that come for you he said i will lift you up because i have seen your faithfulness so receive the power of god in the name of jesus receive the power of god receive the power of god receive the fire of god receive the fire of god receive the fire of god Shaka Taba. How, how old is your pregnancy the hand of god is upon you and it shall go well no sickness no complication in the name of jesus and i use you as a point of contact anyone that is pregnant we declare they will deliver safely no evil altar will speak against them no negative altar will speak against them in the name of jesus receive every pregnant woman put your hand on on your belly every pregnant woman put your hand on your belly how ask that lady how old is her pregnancy how many months eight months put your hand on your belly father we call that baby a miracle baby in the name of jesus we declare that that baby will rise and do the work of the lord everyone that is pregnant there is no need of fearing you are a covenanting with the altar the altar of the living god and we decree and declare in the mighty name of jesus you are moving in another dimension you will deliver safely there will be no sickness and disease there will be no oppression many of you will deliver like the hebrew women before you know which you have delivered it will be painless pain free no complication in the name of jesus we break every evil altar 
We break every evil order. Yes, yes, yes. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Power. We break every evil order. We break every wicked order. That's why you came. You came to Rima first. To move to the next level. The oil of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus. And now if you are here and you have ever suffered from any miscarriage, put your hand on your womb because I call three categories of people out. Put your hand on your womb. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. By the word of God, spirit of miscarriage uprooted in the name of Jesus. We destroy the spirit of miscarriage. You will never again see you lose your child. In the name of Jesus, fire, 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 fire. Reserve it, reserve it. We break every evil order. We break every evil order. We break every evil order. We break every evil of us. Shaka Taraba. Mande Reboko Toroba. And if you are here, you are struggling with a baby. You have never conceived before. You are struggling. Put your hand on your belly. If you are a man, put your hand on your belly too. Because if you are the reason, you are receiving healing. If you are a man, if you have a low spam card, put your hand on your belly, everybody. I receive. Say, I receive. Say, I receive the power to be fruitful. Now, now, say in the name of Jesus, I receive the anointing to be fruitful. Now, reserve it, fire, reserve it, fire, yes, 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 there are things money cannot buy, there are things money cannot buy, it gives from above, it comes from above, I decree and declare, from today, we declare Rima Feast a crown of fruitfulness. Hey, we declare Rima Feast a crown of fruitfulness. Hallelujah. We speak it prophetically. And so shall it be. Man of God. If you can have, starting from next year, Reverend Julian, starting from next year, let it be a day, take a session where they can bring children, babies, to dedicate to the Lord. And see what our God will do. You will see how many miracle babies that will be dedicated every year, year after year after year after year, because this is a fruitful crown. Hallelujah. And let me also tell you the next thing God is going to be doing, and this is a prophecy for Rima Feast, but it's also a prophecy for Ruwak Assemble. The next thing God is going to be doing in this ministry is that God is going to be raising fruitful people. Fruitful people. You will come from the streets. You will come battered, shattered, but you become a millionaire here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't hear what I'm saying. I say in Ruwak Assemble, God is going to be raising fruitful people. Say the Lord. It's a ground of raising fruitful people. Listen. Between now, say the Lord. Between now and 2020. No, actually I hear 2029. 2029. How many years? 
five years five years from now the lord said i should let you know that ruach assemble we have key people in every phase of the society in this nation in this nation you will have key people in media you will have key people in the parliament you will have key people in the government you will have people in the hospital you will have people in the industry you will have people in everywhere and these are not ordinary people these are key people hallelujah write it down thank god it's been recorded five years from today you will see key people from this Ruach assemble. They will be all over the key places in this nation. There will be nowhere, starting from the airport to the market, there will be nowhere you will go, you will not find a member of Ruach assemble. listen man of God I don't know but I think I came for you I came for you because a church can only go as far as the leader is going the Lord said I should tell you that get ready because in the next five years God is going to give you powerful strong mighty five hundred men five men 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 500 that are in the industry that are in the marketplace that are listen listen wait if you clap too early i forget the prophecy i'm a woman it's flowing i'm obeying when i finish i tell you to clap the lord said i should tell you there's going to be 500 strong men that is going to race around you and please be careful because some of them will come directly from the street some of them will come smelling some of them will come battered and tattered they are not yet there but god is going to use you it's like the mighty men of david god is going to use you to raise them and god says i will confirm in your heart as they come and as soon as you lay your hand on them they begin to prosper they begin to prosper doors will be open and they are going to be 500 of them and the lord says these 500 men in the next hundred years listen carefully in the next hundred years God will use them to impart West, East, South, and North Africa. You are not seeing what I'm seeing. That's why you are clapping like that. Your clapping is not born again. If you are seeing what I'm seeing, some of you will be somersaulting, some of you will be jumping, some of you will be shouting, some of you will be hey! We have entered a season, an era in this season. I'm telling you, this nation, something is about to happen and you are the set man god has chosen you for a mega assignment in this season and whether they are seen word or the sin word whether they believe it or not we are standing with you and the word of god will come to pass hey is there some millionaire in the house is there some millionaire in the house is there some millionaire in the house receive it receive it receive it receive it in the name of jesus every poverty altar is broken in jesus name somebody say i receive it give jesus a big clap offering you can go back to your seat my name my name is john so i'm a john the baptist so i came to prepare the way 
for the rest of the great men of God that will come and take us to the next level. Can we celebrate Jesus? Can we celebrate Jesus? Listen, this is the last thing I'm about to do. And then we will take, man of God, as we were prophesying, God was healing people from all manner of sickness and disease. As we were prophesying, the angel of healing, when they were singing the song, you are the Lord that healed me. The angels of healing was carrying healing around and people were being set free from all manner of doctor's report. Negative doctor's report that we are being cancelled. Listen, last month I was in a place in Nigeria called Oji River. Oji River local government. I was pre preaching for an Anglican church in that region and the entire Anglican church in that region was hosting me in a crusade and uh, and uh, I was declaring and without touching anybody we just like as I was speaking like this we, we are hearing how God was opening people's eye opening people's ear how God was setting people free from all manner of sickness and disease and while I was doing the same here today God told me say John open your eye look at what I'm doing there look at what I'm that's the work of a prophet we only confirm what God is doing we are not the one doing it we are just confirming what God is doing so watch yourself check yourself very soon we're just going to rush forward give us a few testimony and we give God all the glory every man of God carry a different grace somebody say different grace every man of God carry a different grace my own grace I don't struggle I just speak sometimes I even miss my word and say whatever I shouldn't say and miracle is happen sometimes I can even slap people miracle will happen it's just it's amazing it's amazing. It's uh, sometimes you know, really. In some occasion, I slap somebody. I was trying to rebook the person. He said, "I just got pregnant." He said, "I just got pregnant." I said, "What do you mean that you just got pregnant?" He said, "When you slap me, something leap in my womb." I said, "Come, okay, let me slap you again. I want you to have twins." <laughs> Last time I was in Kenya, I was ministering to a lady. I believe in, it was in the church of Apostle David Juma. I was ministering to a lady that was not able to be pregnant for many years. Many, I don't even know if the lady is here. She was not able to be pregnant for many, many, many years. And I just walked to her. I said, the Lord said, receive your baby. They called me, I think it was last year or early this year. They said she has delivered. She has delivered. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if if you know the lady I'm talking about because I think you were in the meeting, Pastor T. Do you know the lady I'm talking about? You know, pa? Oh, she's from she's from the headquarters. Okay. Listen. Who have my book? Who who is, who are the people taking care of this book for me? Can you bring it quickly? Those people taking care of the book. Who are the people? Okay. Please open that book. If you want this book, can you rush now and come and take it? Rush, rush, rush. How much are they going for? Fifteen. One, fifteen. Or what? Thousand five. Is it thousand five? Okay. Okay. Thousand five. So give it to them quickly, quickly, quickly. I want them to take it. Please rush, rush. Somebody want four. Somebody want four. How are they paying? Tell them how to pay. Pardon? No, it's not free. I just told them now. It's 50. It's 1,005. They say it's 1,000. Pardon? 1,500. 1,500. Give. Eh? They are asking how do they pay, man of God. Can you come, uh, Bishop? Oh, on the screen. Please look on the screen. We trust you. Just take the book and go. And then pay it on the screen. We trust you. Run, 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 run. Please, can you bring out the books? Bring out the books. Go and make sure we have all the books. Because all these people that are coming, they are more than the books. Go and get all the books. First come, first serve. As soon as it's finished, let them go so that I can pray and get the testimony and go. Please, let's do it fast. Let's do it fast. You are the Lord. 
Keep receiving your healing. Keep receiving your healing. Miracle is happening wherever you are. Keep receiving your healing. Keep receiving your healing. Miracle is happening. Please tell the people to bring the rest of the book and distribute it from this side so that we can do it fast. Bring the rest of the book so that we can distribute it from this side. Hello. Listen, I'm an organizer. I'm a, listen, listen. Go back, go back, everybody. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Pardon? Make four line, four line, four line, four line. Let's do it quickly because we want to take testimony. Four line, four line, four line, please, quickly. 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 Thank you for having hunger to get the book but we are asking you so that you don't waste our time we are asking you to make four lines listen can you guys do me a favor trust them and give them the book let them pay with the thing that is projected there please let's do it quickly trust them and give them the book otherwise you will waste a lot of time yeah so do you hear it guide them The rest of you stand on your feet stand on your feet and receive your miracle now receive your miracle now anywhere you are sick in your body anywhere you are sick in your body place your hand there and receive your miracle receive your testimonies now in the name of jesus any evil author that is responsible for your sickness any evil author responsible for your disease any evil author responsible for that bad report receive it receive your healing in the name of jesus i pray for you now i pray for you now begin to do something you cannot do before Farodi TV, wega umaga na moshie.